I see those big, bright, shiny red trucks just a trucking down the road. Those big, bright, shiny red trucks just a looking for another load. Well, it's a family tradition, any Rocky Mountain day. Our fathers before us showed us the way. We work for asphalt cowboys and concrete kings, but that's never been a problem because we got diesel in our veins. We've got diesel in our veins. What's up, JFW family? Welcome back to the Channel 23 podcast. The purpose of this podcast is to reach out and touch the fleet, to engage and inform everyone with all things JFW. In the studio, we got Brother Jim, Brother Dave, and Super Dave. Good morning, guys. Morning, morning everybody. everybody. Morning. You guys ready for the pledge? Or you, what's up, Jim? No, no, I was you just look? waiting for the pledge. I was like, I was... I was thinking of it. <laughs> nice. I always I, want to end that pledge with hoorah for some reason. I, like I, I want to say amen. That's what I, <laughs> I, I get like. The, I don't know. I like, you know, I tell I want, you, I, I can, that is memorized, ingrained. You know, oh, yeah. if I get Alzheimer's, I'll probably remember the pledge. But <laughs> it's a shame. And that's because we said it in school every morning. Yeah. yeah. And it's a shame they don't do that now. Yeah. You know? You talk about the Alzheimer's thing, Dave, and I kind of laugh because remember the movie Family Vacation? And the, the old couple, they're like, they're sitting there at the turkey dinner table and they're like, let's say Grace, and he stands up and starts saying the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> <laughs> that would be me. That's funny. <laughs> I want to end it with either Haya or Booya. Oh, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. The other day, and, and I love this because they say the pledge at Sunset Ridge at Bella School. Yeah. So the other day, because I gave her and Ace a shout out, I was playing the beginning for them. And then as soon as the pledge came on, boom, Bella started reciting. And I'm like, that's my girl. Yeah. That is awesome, isn't yeah. it? I, I hear I, they did at all the Sam schools there right. at, at, you know, Adams 12. And I just assumed they do it at all schools. And I guess I they don't, don't anymore. I, I, I thought know. they, like, it was a big deal and they voted it. I can't believe it. Or something. I don't know. I can't believe it wouldn't be a controversy in today's day and age. Everything. Oh right. Yeah. No anything pro American is like, oh, right. I don't know if you You're should do that. You're a bad person. If American. You love How dare anything you love your country? Anything about history. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, booyah, haya, and oorah. Let's go. I pledge <laughs> allegiance. And amen. <laughs> to the flag <laughs> of, of the United States, States of America, America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, with, with liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. Hoorah. Hiya. <clears throat> Amen. Booyah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But, I don't know why. I, I just got a visual of that dude on the Liberty commercials. Liberty Biberty. <laughs> <laughs> we got four children in the podcast studio. Oh, today. it's going to be a rough day. <laughs> yeah. Rough day. All right, Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to go out and do some trucking today. We pray for the safety of our fleet, all of their families, and all the other families and individuals we come across on the road today. We pray for patience and in making good, safe decisions. We pray to be accident-free and that we all make it back to the comfort of our homes this evening. We pray for healing and 100% recovery for all of our family members that are ill. No matter what, we trust you, God, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 As a reminder, anything you hear on this podcast today is just our expressed opinion, not JFW's. Episode 105, 599 downloads. We are 54.9 thousand total downloads, and we are still at 219 followers. Man, that's heartbreaking for me. Somebody, mm -hmm. somebody hit that follow we button. We need that right. one. We, we can't, need that one. can't break that 219. Yep. We it, could. We should ask Dad. Get somebody at the at the new gallery where you're yeah. staying to to listen. Turn them on a podcast, Dad. Go find we need a trucker. A, yeah. Yeah, we'll give you some flyers. You can hand them out. <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly enough, we picked up the Ukraine. Two listens from the Ukraine. So. Mm. Huh? Anybody in the military? That? Yeah. Well, we don't have anybody in the military there. Maybe well, I mean, Vitaly's relative. Mm. Yeah, he's, he's got family there yeah. yeah i know sal sandoval i think he was listening for a while but he wasn't at the ukraine i think he was in the middle east so huh i mean can you get on a plane and fly to ukraine with the war going on over I, there? That, that's what i was yeah, i start I, I that's the reason i said if we had anybody over there but yeah. i don't think you can 
I mean, all the actors go there. How do they go there? Private jet. <laughs> 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 they're not calling United and booking a flight. What's That's the, uh, for sure. What's the What's the president's name over there in the UK? Yelensky or it was some... him. That he was, was listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's time for the dad he, joke challenge. He didn't like Joe Rogan. <laughs> no, no, Joe Rogan was yeah, too much. Zelensky. For him. Joe Rogan's washed. <laughs> Speaking of the Ukraine and all that stuff, you know, I used to want to be a history teacher, right? Did not know that. <laughs> nope. And I saw there was no future in it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, wow. All right, then. I'll, 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 did you hear about the man who invented the knock-knock joke? Who's there? He won the Nobel Prize. Uh, <laughs> Nobel. I think we've done that one before. <laughs> I think we have. I th- Nobel. I, I thought we had. Uh, so I got, I got one more because I like this one. What do you call a pig that does karate? Oh man, I've seen this one. I am. Hey, yeah, perch up. I have two. I, ha- I have one for the dog lovers here in the room. Oh, what? what? I got. I got. So I don't forget. I do have two Thanksgiving jokes from the guests, but I'm saving them for next week. So okay. you guys that sent me the jokes, I'm saving them. Okay. So, so, right. Just so I don't forget right. to say that. Sorry, Dave. Dave. Super Dave, I'll ask you. Do you know why dogs are such good swimmers? Because they have four paws. I don't know. <laughs> Something to do with the doggy paddle. Because they make such good buoys. <laughs> Boys. Uh, good boy, you're a good boy. You know a dad joke's not good when you immediately have to explain it <laughs> after the punchline. I'll follow it up with one that's probably worse. <laughs> do you guys want to hear a joke about construction? Yes. Well, yes. Well, actually, I'm still working on it. <laughs> ah, clever. But yes, I've heard that I one. I think I nailed it. Ooh. <laughs> Since everybody's got two furs today, it must be two for Wednesday. I've got two for you, too. What What did the dirt say to the rain? Oh, let's get dirty. You make me wet. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's an obvious one, too. I love it. If you keep it up, my name will be Mud. Ooh. Okay. I like it. And this one, this one is classic. Oh. Everybody can go home and tell this at the dinner table tonight. I'm gonna ruin it. Did you know you can get just about anything from Amazon, right? Just about anything. So I ordered a chicken and an egg yesterday on Prime. <laughs> let us know what happens. <laughs> Which one came first? I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's one for Bella. She there would like go. that one. The chicken or the egg? Yep. She likes the prime drinks. Have you guys seen those? It's like Gatorade. Uh, uh-uh. But I know you guys don't know the Broncos won this past week. Do you know why football players don't wear glasses? Hmm. Something to do with the field. I don't know. Mm. It's a contact sport. Uh, <laughs> right? Uh, speaking of the chicken and eggs, I don't know if it's a podcast stuff, but... Erica's chickens finally laid eggs. Oh, she's got sweet. yeah, she got well, she had six chickens. One one disappeared. <laughs> but, mm, that's yeah. why they call it fly in the coop. Yep. Yep. Uh, I'm sure it's just fine. It's living, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> it's living the life up somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Come you on. know, I wanted to ask Jim, they're not supposed to fly, but the chickens obviously do fly a little ways, you know, like turkeys or whatever. Do does she or uh James trim their wings or what do you call it when you do that so they can't clip, fly clip, clip their clip, wings clip yeah. their wings the flight wings so yeah. i don't know what you do up until then but we always we always refer to mikey he's become like this chicken expert he is the super chicken Dave. Whisperer, yeah. um but they get once they start to lay eggs and and you're right they're doing the same thing as a turkey has done i've seen all of them kind of fly a little ways and not mm-hmm. very high mm-hmm. The one that she lost was able to fly over the fence. It flew better than the rest. But what they do, Dave, is they get heavy enough once they start to lay eggs, Mm. they don't fly anymore. Gotcha. And so it's that, it's like the juvenile youth spot. (laughs) Same thing happens with humans, doesn't it? (laughs) You're one egg away from not being able to fly. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That's crazy. Mm. New employees, we got Horacio Huerta. Zach Thorpe and Frank Clare, welcome to the fleet, guys. Yeah, welcome, you welcome, guys. Welcome, guys. Celebrations. Did, did, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, did, did you read the expressed opinions? Did I 
Yeah. Was I asleep yeah. through that? You were. Wow. Yeah. See, it happens. It happened wow. to me last week. Wow. You know, I was worried. I yeah. wanted to be sure we were covered. Yeah, because I was thinking. I was, was going to have to call my insurance agent. In, in fact, I, <laughs> I, I, I know when he read them, he goes, it's just the you know our expressed opinions, not JFW. And I'm like, so does that stop us from getting sued individually? <laughs> nope. I had that. Brother thought. Dave needs a separate disclaimer. <laughs> His opinions are not JFW's or the men's in this room. <laughs> it's his own expressed opinion. <laughs> oh. Celebrations, anniversaries. Gene Freeman, five years this past Sunday. Welcome to the five year right club, on, Gene. Gene, absolutely. Way to go, Gene. Gene, I seen you pick up your jacket the other day. I was on the phone and I feel bad for not uh, recognizing you for that. So there's an extra recognition there. Amber Corollas and Francisco Alvarez, they share the exact same anniversary, and they hit two years today. Wow. Two twins. years. Awesome. Two years. Good job, guys. Congratulations. Yep. Gabe Colmanero hits one year tomorrow. Happy anniversary, Gabe. One That's year awesome. on a return. I call uh, that one year. Yeah. he's. I think he's probably two point something. Two point something. Yeah. Should I start saying um, six and a half from my time before? <laughs> I'm just pointing it out. If you if you, <laughs> yep, if you want to. I don't want to. He's a returning dude, and that's awesome that he chose us Should we twice. treat this like a new relationship and go, do you know what today is? Our six-month anniversary. Oh. Because <laughs> we can. We it's can, our four-and-a-half-month anniversary. We day. could tease Russ and Stingray, right? Yeah. They've they both been back a couple of times. Mm, yeah, uh, they sure have. Because yep. Russ would have more years than you, right, Dave? Let me say this. If no. If um, yeah, actually, he started six months before me. Yeah. Yeah, he, he was he was here a little bit before me. Wow. If you're thinking about leaving JFW, I mean, we would give you our blessing and wish you the best. But you should talk to one of the people that have left and came back. A- absolutely, Jim. I think that all has to do with what if, you know, if you like to drive and you want to drive and you understand that, you know, you're not just a driver. You know, you got to look at all that. I think this is a great place. I think it's, we're, you know, we're building a place where you can have a career. If you want to do something else, like you said, we, we welcome that. Mm-hmm. You know, Dave, you just mentioned Vitaly, and he just sent us a picture of you, yeah, a picture. Yeah. He got he, he got his pilot's license right. and you stuff. Know, and I, Let's give Vitaly a shout out because he got his pilot's license three years ago, and he is a proud pilot for SkyWest Airlines now. Okay. And he sent nice. me a picture of... Him in his uniform oh, and everything. Nice. He goes, and the caption he said was, "I finally made it." Yeah, nice. that's awesome. So, yeah, and that, that's a dream, and that's what that's what we welcome. But yeah, if you if absolutely, Jam, if you like to drive, the the gentleman you you know you introduced me to the other day, one of the new guys, he was like, "I like to drive." I'm like, "This is the place." Yeah, we got right? trucks. These yeah, guys exactly. are in such high demand. The pilots are right now. It's ridiculous. Mm. Oh yeah, because yeah. why? After COVID, everybody's yes. trying to fly. Well, I mean, re- re- retirement conditions. and. And the airline industry is like the oil industry. When it's good, it's great. When it's bad, woo, Katie bar the door, it sucks. Yeah. yeah You're virtually the, jobless. The bankruptcy and COVID and all that yeah. kind of stuff that they went through. Yeah. But the the top ar- airlines is where you want to go or that's where everybody wants to go to. And that's the ones that are, I mean, they're filled up or filling up because they have more applications. It's the, I don't, can't, I don't want to call them a lesser <laughs> company because they I mean, they're I still safe some premier smaller yeah, yeah. premier airlines yeah, yeah there's some jfw of the airlines you yeah know, <laughs> that people want to work at yeah yeah absolutely got, got a good culture huh, yep i was By gonna the way, say that that's when you're driving an end dump for brother and son's trucking and then you come to jfw right, right? <laughs> bit of a change what airline you fly for bacchus and sons <laughs> 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 yeah, got one prop plane it's from the mm-hmm. 70s by the way, speaking of a great place to work, maybe I was a little bit immature, but last night on Facebook, I saw somebody comment on one of our ads, they're a joke, but they spelled there, T-H-E-R, so I just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I just corrected him. Oh, <laughs> I spelled it the right funny. way for him. Yeah. All right, let's see, birthdays. Oh, Holly White, she has a birthday this Friday. Jim, you doing anything special for Holly's birthday? Yes, we are. We are sweet. Yeah. Do you know what yet? <laughs> <laughs> Let me write that reminder down, Jam. <laughs> do do that for Friday. <laughs> Family birthday celebrations. Ataya Coleman Martinez is Tony Martinez significant other. Her birthday is today, and then Ernesto's son Sebastian 
turns one year old this one years old this week so happy birthday happy birthday happy yeah. birthday yeah i want to give a big shout out to chris beam chris beam is 40 pounds down but the best news and this is what he texted me about was his blood pressure went from 140 over 90 to 110 over 78 that is awesome that's a that's yeah. amazing I've That's seen amazing. he's posted on Facebook a couple walks that he's taken with the dog and he, he, stuff like that. So. He actually, I mean, I, get, I want to say quite a bit, but he really does some long walks. It's yeah. quite a bit he's posting. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm proud of him for walking Absolutely. every night because when you get home, I mean, I sit on my butt, you know, yeah. and he's going out and going for walks. That's yeah. awesome. Walking's really good for your brain. Have you guys ever heard of EMDR therapy? So yeah. EMDR, it's like <sighs> counselors or therapists use this to get people to work through things and it's getting your right brain and your like your your right side and your left side and your right side and your left side sometimes they'll play you'll put headphones on and there'll be like a sound in your right ear sound in your left boom 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 or a tick 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 well god gave us this ability by walking because you're using your right leg and your left leg your right leg and your left leg so if you go for a long walk and you talk to somebody that can listen to your crap it's supposed to be very therapeutic for you Wow. Huh. Yeah, because I, I just recently seen some modeling jam with all the AI and stuff. They showed what walking just 15 minutes a day every day mm -hmm. will do for your body type. And they show, like, you know, let's say, like, Chris, you know, how he's he's going on his walks and he's lost this weight and stuff. You know, so somebody that's overweight and then what 15 minute does every day and how how, how awesome. amazing it is. But that's also every day. You know, right. and that, that's, a, that's a commitment, but, huh. you know, that's what you need to do. So EMDR therapy focuses directly on memory and is intended to change the way that the memory is stored in the brain, thus reducing and eliminating the problematic symptoms. And it's just from wow. getting your huh. memory to store things differently. Yeah. Go back to our roots. We used to yeah, cause don't they say run and walk everywhere. Right. <laughs> I mean, if you're right-handed, you're left brain. Does that Only left-handed people are in their right mind. Is what they used to say. Yeah. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> and isn't being right or left-handed genetic? I don't know. Could be. No idea. But anyway, Chris Beam, great job. I mean, I hope yeah. that inspires. You know, I asked him permission to talk about it on the podcast because that's inspiring. Oh, yeah, that's, that's huge. If, yeah. if you are, you know, if you're overweight or you have some health problems, just uh, changing your diet and going on long walks. Right. Go buy a dog. Call mm -hmm. somebody, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. this is this is good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> or go for a fun walk. <laughs> Again, uh, express Dave's expressed opinions. <laughs> I'd have that dog on the leash. My blood pressure would go up, not down. Uh, <laughs> That's all right. because it would immediately take a dump. <laughs> you have to. Clean oh, right. <laughs> like I even see it. a dog walking anywhere. It's crapping. <laughs> Oh, man. I know what I'm getting Dave for his <laughs> birthday. I mean, I, I'll i testify to that, Jim. I mean, no matter where we go, if there's a dog and Dave's with me. It's crap. It's, it's, it's taking a dump. Uh -huh. You know, everybody else, when I go places, they're walking their dog. Dad, you, they're with Dave. They're taking a shit. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> shout outs. Got a really good shout out from Tony Martinez. He wants to send a birthday shout out to... His significant other, Ataya Coleman. No, she has no connections with DG Coleman. Brother Dave, let's not get it twisted. Thank you for all your hard work and dedication to our family. You are an amazing woman, mother, partner, etc. If there was a flower for every task you have completed for us, the world would be flowerless. Your hard work has been recognized every day. The kids and I are forever grateful to have you around. Love you. P.S. I still blame you for making me gain weight because of all that good, <laughs> good cooking you do. Man, I don't know who this Italia Coleman is, but it uh, seems like she might have changed Tony up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's awesome. Now, we used to call Tony Chimichanga, right, from Tex. He used to call him Chimichanga. Then he lost all that weight. We started calling him Taquito. <laughs> but if he's gaining weight back again, I don't know. Yeah. What are we going to call him, Chalupa? <laughs> you know what they say about every great man. He's got a great woman by him. Absolutely. Yep. All right. Next. Hey, good afternoon, Jam. Hope all is well. Oh, who gave me the shout out? Wow. Uh, hang on a second. Let me see who gave me the shout out. <laughs> good. While you're looking it up, I'll jump in there and... Great. Uh, 
do John Moore mentioned a shout out for the wash bay. And he says it's just amazing all the hard work they put in and what excellent results come out of that wash bay. I thought that was worded pretty special. Not just the trucks look good, the excellent results. And man, the wash bays at both yards. I mean, it's just, it's amazing, you know, and I don't think everybody really takes a hold of that. They've never had to wash the truck themselves or they've never had to go sit at a truck wash in line and wait hours and hours to get a truck wash and generally to get a mediocre truck wash at best. Yeah. And these these guys and gals in our wash bays, on our wash crew, they're just they're badass. They just the truck I just don't see a truck that has a spot missed on it. Mm. You know, and we've had that in the past where you know, you see the side of a trailer and there's seven huge spots that are missed and It's like when just, I wash a pickup. <laughs> yeah. We just don't have that. It's it's amazing. So yeah. thanks for mentioning that, John and you know, Super Dave and I had a meeting with him, and I just, they're just a special crew. They're just pretty awesome, pretty awesome people. They really so are. they yeah. take it to another level. They do. You know, they do. And I like to say that that's what everybody does at JFW. You know, I mean, they care, they're conscientious, um, they want to create that A number one product. Yeah. Mm. And whether you're driving, whether you're dispatching, and, and the wash crew. And I told them at the end of the meeting after you bugged out yesterday afternoon, Dave. I said, I can't even count the number of times that people say, and I know you guys will say it too, your trucks are always clean. Right. And they laughed because they're like, no, they're not. (laughs) And I was like, I know, but still they see one clean truck out there and they say, wow, they're all clean. The thing is, they're incredibly clean. (laughs) Right. They're not 30 feet across the highway clean. They're clean. You know, and the state patrol notices that and the ports of entry notice that. And, you know, I mean, it's, it is easy to take them for granted. And I just, I really wish we could get everybody to drive around every puddle and slow down in those areas and, you know, just help the wash bay continue to do that and make their job easier. So, and then I have another shout out for Rich Trujillo. Talked to him this morning and just an update on the votes that were cast for him in his Commerce City City Council race. He actually wound up with 441 votes total in that race. Now, he did lose the race. Rene Chacon had over 1,000. But it is mind-boggling to me that 441 people actually wrote that man's name in. To The testament to that is people want change and they're desperate for it. The rest of the people just checked that box and that's how... They didn't know about it. They, yeah. they just didn't. How do you how do you know if your name's not on there? That's, Absolutely, that's the amazing thing about it. And I guess that's what I'm getting at. He touched yep. 441 people that wrote his name in. That yep. it yep. is just mind boggling. The disappointing part about it is, in his district and overall, only about 20 percent of the people voted. And that is, boy, if we want change. We're not going to get it with 20% participation. Yeah, the, the, the question there is you, you got to vote, Dave. Right. I mean, if you're really upset, because I feel like some people aren't voting because they're just upset about everything, but you yeah, can't. Yeah, they've almost given up. Yeah. Right? Like, what good does it do it, me to vote? Exactly. Right? But you can't, you can't do that. You right. know, you got to. That's a small amount of involvement that they've made it pretty easy to fill out that ballot that's mailed to you or register if you're not, if you didn't get a ballot. But right. All that stuff. Absolutely. And we, we got that the election coming up, you know, next year that's going to be important. Absolutely. In Adams so, County and many when, other places. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, along that lines, just because we're talking about it, and I know we're not through with shout outs, and I, I don't want to get off the subject, but I was so proud in the vote that everybody shot down Proposition HH, yes. you know, and our property taxes didn't go up. What I'm, well, they, they're they talking about possibly putting a freeze on the mill levy so the cities and counties can't raise them. But Polis has called a special session. He's going to work Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and they're going to work on that. And uh, I pretty much have a pretty solid scuttlebutt. He's still trying to create something to go after our Tabor refunds. That's his goal is to get our Tabor refunds back and, Man, I hope it's something we get a vote on, and he can't just pull governor rule on that. So, because it's he's just not. we voted on Tabor to instigate it back in the day, right? You know, so I would think we'd have to vote on it again, wouldn't you? What? Yeah, <laughs> you would think so, right, Dave? Mm-hmm. I mean, you would think so. So I'm just I'm just putting it out there. This this guy is not helping us. <laughs> he's just not helping us. 
Yeah, I think until you said it the other day, Dave, and I and I know we're in the middle of shout outs here, but on on the political version of that, that I just want to mention to everybody that's it's a pretty easy way to look at it because there was so much confusion mm-hmm. over HH. You know, is it a good bill? Is it a bad bill? And all this other stuff. And the gist of HH was to reduce our ta- taxes. That was that, the sales. That was the sales the pitch, sales right? Pitch. That was the. That's what you thought from that's, everything. The way and, it was written was tricky. Yes, yes, yes. But Dave brought to my attention, and he's and he's you know here twice today. I heard Casey tell you. About <laughs> it. Okay, I so, love it. Let's hear it. So you're right, Dave. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Jam just put his hand head in his hand, but anyway, for for, for everybody to keep it simple is you don't have to put anything to a vote or tell anybody or you don't have to. I'm not saying it right to reduce taxes. If you're truly reducing taxes, you just do it. You just do it. Boom. Yes. You don't have to ask anybody. No. If it's being voted on, somehow it's an increase. It's a tax increase. Sneaky. Yes. yes. <laughs> even if it, even if they tell you that you don't, the reason it's a bill and being voted on is it still raises the taxes. So if you run across any bill, it's going to that's a, on the ballot. That's on a ballot. It's a tax increase. It's yeah. going to affect you <laughs> yes. somehow. It is a tax. Otherwise, increase. they, they just lower it and go. Hey, I did a really good thing. I lowered yeah. everybody's taxes. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't need just to be like he on. did in his election last year when he sent out all our Tabor refunds and called and it his. Yes, and he said, "I'm refunding money," which the federal he government is suing Colorado. Yes. Oh, really? Yeah, because it should have been taxed. You can't. He they called uh, it his money. Ah. Uh, so the federal government's after the state. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. It gets it gets so deep, but let's let, let's get yeah. back. To let's shout get back outs. to shout outs. Yeah. 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 Right. So I want to mention on your shout out, Dave, and. You know, you just had a meeting with them, and and we've taken the time several times to to mention the Wash Bay. And again, I, I agree. You know, Dave mentioned that you know the port of entry, the state patrol. Our customers see those tr- those trucks and that wash job, and that's where we really get it mentioned to us a lot is from our customers, Dave. Right? I am just really hoping the Wash Bay has taken the time to listen to the podcast, though. Did you Did you happen to ask? No. No, and and gym. here's all this talk and and it's great you know we're we're mentioning it the drivers are hearing that you know our listeners are hearing that but is our wash bay hearing this right well you know? i know lexi brown listened one time because she said it was better than she thought it would be right you, and, <laughs> and you mentioned that too jam so i guess i guess maybe i just need to mention something that hey do you guys know right. you get mentioned on the podcast all the time yeah, all the time and, huh? and, are, and are you and some of the stuff we talk about you know, doesn't pertain to them, but here's a thank you that does. Yeah. Makes your job worthwhile. The voting does. I mean, the rest is so interesting. Why wouldn't you want to listen? <laughs> yeah, why would you not want to? It's a good question. Uh, so I did figure it out. This is from Omar Reyes. Sorry oh. that I forgot who was from Omar. Hey, good afternoon, Jam. Hope all is well. I want to give a shout out on the podcast to Chili Dog. I think his truck was number 0096. Last week, my truck was down, and without hesitation, Chili Dog came and helped me try to figure out the problem. And we then had to call the shop since we couldn't address the problem ourselves. Chili Dog then waited there in the cold until I had a full instructions on what to do by the shop. That there showed me great teamwork and what being in JFW family is all about. Man, That's it awesome. just doesn't surprise me at all from nope, Chili Dog. Not, not from Chili Dog, no. Nope. Yep. He's silent warrior. Yep, yep, yep. Abs- absolutely. Good, and then good here is a shout out from Brenda Alvarez. That's Francisco Alvarez's wife. She's very involved in our social media. She always likes her podcast. She knows more about JFW than some of our drivers do. Anyway, this was written yesterday, so it says because <laughs> <laughs> she listens to the podcast. Yeah, awesome, the podcast. Right? You Just can't, awesome. yeah, you can't beat that. Tomorrow, November fifteenth, will be Francisco's second year anniversary at JFW. Woohoo! Just wanted to say to him, happy anniversary from our kids and I. We are so proud of you. Thank you, JFW. Thank you to the brothers. He was a new graduate graduate with some experience, and it seemed like all anyone was asking for was two years plus experience. All we could think of, all we could think was, how can someone get experience if no one's willing to give him a chance at getting experience? With that being said, I'd like to thank you, Super Dave, for giving him an opportunity and hiring him. Because now, here he is two years in. So I commented back like, wow, I just really love how much you support your husband. And she said, also, definitely love to support him. He's my rock. Oh, yeah, yeah that's, 
Yeah, that you. We must have been short drivers. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna. I would just want as you read that and the date, Jam. That's a, you know, it's not a bad time, but it's a little tougher time to start here at JFW. Yeah, coming into winter, it and is. so he he his first season he weathered the storm. Right? Yeah. Literally. Right. Yes. And then and then obviously he's found success and yep. congratulations. That's, tell you what, that's awesome. He is a silent warrior. That mm-hmm. dude, anytime you say good morning, hello, smiling, he goes, he gets the job done. I mean, he just nice. he just goes and takes care of it. It's good stuff. Right. You can you can see what kind of family he has. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. yep. Got a good woman behind a good great woman behind a good man. <laughs> There's right. another one. Yep. 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 As they say, the better half, right? Yes. Mike Bortz wants to give a shout out. He says, I'd like to give a shout out and the celebrations tomorrow on the podcast to my daughter. She and the love of her life got married this weekend on Sunday. I'd like to congratulate Sam and Shanice. Ah, nice. Well, congratulations, happy, kids. Happy, that's not your first anniversary, just wedding, an, wedding happy wedding yeah, anniversary. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. congratulations the, the, on the, your, the start. On your marriage. Yep. Yep. I get what you're saying, Jim. When's, when's your first birth date? <laughs> right because you have your birthday right right, right. Yeah, the so day you, you were born have your wedding but yeah, yeah anyway I, I wish you guys uh, many years of happiness absolutely Troy Hunt has a shout out good morning Jam I have to give a spotlight shout out to me hermano Pedro Sotelo in 0097 in addition to his many talents he also replaces windshields to which he has a seasoned journeyman resume he replaced both of my vehicles windshields this past weekend and did an excellent job for a reasonable price. Maybe a suggestion, a get-to-know-you segment on the podcast. I personally miss a bamboo introduction with the three questions that were put out by email once you get hired onto the family. Have a great podcast. Much love, your brother Troy. Great shout-out. That nice is job, awesome, Rico. yeah. That's I like job. that idea, get-to-know-you, and we could pick different people yeah. each yes. week. And I pick and- Troy Hunt. There you go. <laughs> Why don't you write us a little segment, segment on and, who you are? Try to keep it to the three questions, though, Troy. We don't need a dissertation. Like, just, yeah. you know, three fun facts yeah. about your keep life. Keep it less than, like, three pages, right? <laughs> Troy, only because I know you and love you. I was going to joke and say we need to add a fourth question to that and just put your political affiliation. <laughs> <laughs> I know it, and we'll leave that question <laughs> off this week. Uh, oh, man. Uh, Troy would be a good politician. He just, would. The way he speaks. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Any other shout outs, guys? Yeah, I kind of want to give a, a, sh- a generic shout out, I guess, for the, you know, I've kind of done this before, um, you know, and we, we've talked about it several times and you guys hear us on the radio when me and Dave, you know, sit out in the truck and watch some of the trucks leave and stuff like that. And we're usually talking and stuff like that and we pick stuff out. Um, but it, it's, I guess it's a shout out to everybody. Um, and I guess that's what I'm calling it generic of, of the job we complete every day, because as we sit there in the driveway, a lot of the drivers come in, well, obviously they're coming in the driveway to get their truck, to leave the driveway mm-hmm. and the way they come in the driveway, it's a start of a rough morning. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> some days, you're you like, know, Whoa. and, and, and we make it through so many days. Everybody makes it through so many days with such, such success. So I, I'm proud of everybody and want to give a shout out to everybody because I watched one of the, the guys come in the driveway the other morning and coming in pretty hot, bounced in the driveway. And as he bounced in the driveway, he's got his phone in his hand looking at it. Huh. You know, and I'm like, okay, all right. So that's that's in your personal vehicle. It's your personal time. Obviously, he was reading his dispatch because he wanted to be prepared for what he's going. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, he's he, you know he's checking on which you know it's in Fort Lupton, but it might be Morton or it might be this. <laughs> right. right. You know, he's he's figuring all that out. So you know, I, I I see that, and it 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 we've talked about it where how it leads to how your day is going to start, like making your bed. You want to be successful for the day, make your bed before you leave, because when you come home. There's your bed that's made. You know, that, that ends your success. So kind of a generic shout out to everybody for getting through the day, every day. And we, we do a really good job of that. So thank you. A lot you. of moving parts to get through a day around here. Yeah. Oh boy. You know, yeah. I mean, you know, we, we, we talk about it. I, I don't want to ruin the shout outs, Jam, but I, the, we, we talk about showing up on time. And I know there's an attendance piece in here, mm-hmm. you know, and we just, our CPA was in yesterday and we discussed, being late and we talked about the pto program and 
and we got some guys that just struggle getting here. Uh-huh. You know, and, and when we when we talk to the CPA about it, describing it, his name's David, is, you know, these guys are late, and but you're late after 6 o'clock, right? And, and you, you, you know, we have a 5 o'clock start time. So there's an hour to show up. I mean, you have all this time. It's not like... Hey, you, you know, it's a nine to five job and you you showed up at 9.02. We have a 5 a.m. start time. You left at 5.03. You're late. It's not that. No. We have a 5 a.m. start time. You have an hour to get out of the yard. Right. But if you leave at 6.02, you think you're two minutes late. You're Doesn't an hour like, and two, two minutes late, yeah. technically. Yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, there's exactly. a big... But but then also, it's it it pains us, and it truly does pain us, the, the leadership team here, and when we discuss about it, that somebody's losing their PTO, and it adds up to a lot of money for two or three minutes after six o'clock. Yeah. You know, and and it's just it's a bummer that they're not gaining that that money. Yeah, not taking advantage of what's offered. Yeah, yeah, I yeah mean, for, for for a for little bit of time. A day. Yes. Yeah, you, yeah. Yeah. So, and not naming names, but we have a driver here. Good driver. Good dude. Yeah. A guy when I see him in the yard. I smile and I'm happy to see him. Almost as as happy as when I see Francisco Alvarez. Okay, that's how good he is, right? Right. He's late three times a month, mm-hmm. right? In those three weeks that he's late, he's losing three months of earnings of PTO. He's never earned. He's either earned one month of. He just had a one year anniversary. He's either earned one month of PTO since he's been here, or no months. But because of how many times he's late. He's not scheduled to earn PTO again until like September of 2024, right? So look at the money that you're leaving on the table. That's what I was. I, yeah. I was waiting for you to do finish, the math. Yeah. So so it's six days a year, right? Times let's say because he's late and his 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 gross income is not going to be as high as it should be because he's losing at least a load a day. He's not getting his percentage bumps ever. Let's just say that guy averages 250 bucks a day. Times are six days in a year. Fifteen hundred bucks. That's fifteen hundred dollars. So when he goes to take a vacation, which we approve because we're a good company and we want him to go and enjoy himself and catch a break, he has to take it unpaid. Right. You could have got paid for going on vacation, bud. And if he goes somewhere, he has to spend mm-hmm. fifteen hundred possibly. Right. And he didn't make fifteen hundred. That's a three thousand yeah. dollar swing. It's just not a good business plan. It's not. Yeah, no. you need to rethink that. No. You know? No, and and the thing is, is we're not we're not upset about that, but it pains us. Like I said originally, that there's that ability to gain that. We want you to be right. successful. Yeah, you know. It, and the old thing too is we're not taking that from him either. Right. He's not earning it. Yeah, and, and he's the, a good guy. And the thing is, is he's normally not. I mean, he was just recently two hours late, but he's normally not. But maybe ten or fifteen minutes late, right? Instead of leaving at 6.15, you could get up 15 minutes earlier and leave before 6. At 5.59, you're still earning money. Yeah. You know? yeah. So Absolutely. like you said originally, he, he averages an hour and 10 minutes to an hour and 20 minutes late. Right. Exactly. So. And honestly, you said it doesn't bother us. It bothers me. It bothers me because I've invested the time into talking to him. And we've talked to I've even tried to come up with a program to help him earn some of that back. Never took advantage of it. I personally wanted to remove him from his truck assignment because we got people here that'll leave on time. But I had to speak to my my partner here, Super Dave, <laughs> and Super Dave disagrees. He says, you know what, that's a good guy and it's a good driver, and you know what, he goes, he runs that truck, we don't have any other problems with him. And, he, uh, and he's already being penalized, right? And he's yeah. already being, it, he's it, doing it, yeah. He's, yeah. he's penalizing himself. As yeah. is JFW. Yeah. 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 So. yeah. So. I respect your decision there, Super Dave. I think you're right. <laughs> you know? So it just irks me, you know. It's it's like, it's, it's tough. It's just like when you said it, it it does upset you, Jim. It doesn't upset us like we're angry, though. Yeah, I'm not angry. Yeah, yeah. it's just yeah. not. I, I mean, like, oh, we got to do something to this guy. It's not that, you guys. It's, it's just that, you know, you spent the time trying to talk to him. Yeah. And, I got to spend the time every every week putting right. him in. Yeah. Yeah, right. I got to spend time taking the PTO away from like. Yeah, it's it's just not a good business plan. So, all right, any other shout outs, guys? No. All right, moving on to the discussion. Ismael Rodriguez. He asks, "I've been seeing things about a possible closure on a runaway truck ramp in Genesee. 
I saw Fox 31 talking about it. So I did a little research, <clears throat> pulled it up. Yep, it's true. From mile marker 257, just east of Genesee, uh, there's a there's a runaway truck ramp there. That's the one that doesn't have an incline on it. It's just flat on the shoulder of the road. Okay, uh, they're gonna close that uh, to make it more robust and visible in case of an emergency. The closure is gonna be from the end of November to early late May to excuse me to late May or early June. There will be no ramp eastbound from Eisenhower, the Eisenhower Tunnel to Golden. So. Couple. Which there was only one before. There was only one before that yeah. one, right. So I guess my question is, has anybody used it? Because the controversy is, well, oh my God, there's no runaway truck ramp there. And they want to make it more visible and robust, but now there's not going to be one until until it's there again. So, uh, In your investigation, Jim, are they going to keep it on that side of the highway? Because I know CDOT and CMCA has been going through a lot of... Uh, analysis together mm -hmm. because they want to move it to the left side and put it between the two freeways mm. and all the truckers are like we're, we're not going to be out there we're going to be in the slow lane and it, wow. there's a debate about that because i'm like wait a minute if you're out of control and you're going 70 right you're not going to be in the slow lane right. Look, you're going to be in any open lane right. trying not to kill somebody like the kid that came down and killed yeah. everybody yeah. yeah yeah so you're gonna yeah you're gonna take the path of least resistance or put yourself on the side of the mountain. Right. You're going to do what it takes to get into that. So I didn't see that, but they did say they're going to make it on an incline. So it's not going to be flat. And that's it, just so stupid, Jim. And now that, that's just a visual yeah, aid. That's yeah, it. Right. Yeah. You put four feet of pea gravel in something, it's going to friggin' stop you. Right. Or three feet or whatever, whatever it is. Whatever it is. It's soft. Downhill, and, uphill. It doesn't yeah. matter. It's yeah. going to stop you. And I, I'm glad you did some research because I, I didn't have time because I wanted to look into it because it was a conversation, like you said, Dave, at the, the motor carriers. But like your statement and, and reading it there, so they're going to close it so there isn't one that whole period. And then the thing is, is has that ramp ever failed not to stop somebody that used it. Right. Whether downhill, just like you mentioned, Dave, yeah. downhill, uphill, it doesn't matter. If it's done its job, why are you doing anything with it? Absolutely. And most people, yeah. you don't really see it because it's not like the one when you come out of the tunnel and there's that It'd ski be, slope, yeah, ski we jump. We should probably look and see how many people have used it, which looks what, like a ski jump because coincidentally there's a freaking mountain there. Right. That's the only place to put it is <laughs> right? up, up the mountain. Yeah, that's the reason but, it's up the mountain. That's but that, the only place to put it. But that's my whole thing, though, Dave. No matter how many people have used it, I've never heard, I've never seen one news program is, oh, the runaway tramp, truck ramp failed today right. and the truck ended up over the mountain. Have you ever seen that? No. Nope. So why mess with it? Yeah. I do know. Do you guys know how that one, or what the cause of that one? Why it was installed? That was the horse trailer one, wasn't it, Dave? Yeah, and From I want to say it was ago, like right. Yeah, yeah. I want to say it was in the early seventies, like seventy four, <clears throat> yeah. maybe maybe mid seventy five, something like that. And a hor And if I'm not mistaken, you guys, it wasn't a semi load. No, it was, it was a, a horse pickup and horse trailer. Pickup yeah. and horse trailer, right. but it was a big horse trailer. It was right. like. A twelve place horse trailer, yeah, or something. at least, yeah. and man, yeah, he like a, went out of control. A and, style trailer, yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably, yeah. yeah feather light or whatever. Yeah. yeah, and there were just dead horses and half alive horses right. everywhere on that mm -hmm. interstate. I guess Terrible. it was a horrific scene. Yeah. And now that, that makes me wonder: Would even a pickup that was out of control take that? No, yeah, they wouldn't yeah, know. yeah, I could see making it more recognizable, like more like signage, more visible. Yeah, yeah, but I think that part redoing good. it or closing it. Why you redo it? I just don't. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't know what yeah. they need to do. That's a really steep drop off right there on the right hand side of the road. <laughs> Here we they, go. Just, <laughs> they just need to make it an exit ramp off <laughs> right off the edge like when they do when you when you i'm not gonna Whee! get off here but i'll make it all the way to dylan uh, and just put a big sign up yeah. runaway truck ramp right <laughs> some housekeeping items to go over <laughs> did we did we did we answer his question though or do we no uh, no he was just bringing it up he yeah. thought it would be a good topic to it, discuss is, it is a great topic we enjoyed it yeah. thank you yeah. it was fun <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. Huh. I know they did make it because it used to be uh, you would get I think a careless or a reckless for using it yeah for being in it yes. yeah and yeah, they they got a reckless yeah yeah they've taken that away yeah, to yeah. encourage people it, to, to use it yeah like oh I don't want to get yeah, reckless yeah they don't ticket you for doing that yeah. nope so nope. yeah I remember in truck driving school they explained to us like if there was a family playing in front of a runaway truck ramp you know 
playing in the sand, you're supposed to run them over to save everybody else's life. That'd be a tough decision. Yeah, to yeah. I, I think of it too, I, and I'm, maybe I'm totally wrong speaking out my, my butt here, but I thought it was the same thing, and I, a weird comparison, but you can drop off your baby with no questions asked. At the fire department. And not be... A, a, Child abandonment. Yeah, prosecuted mm-hmm. because you, you're giving your, your baby t- for some kind of care. Yeah, not and, at the tr- runaway truck ramp. <laughs> yeah. At the yeah, fire department. Yeah, exactly. I guess that's what I'm kind of comparing it to. Hey, don't use that. You might get a ticket. You're giving right. me a hard time? Uh, we just shifted gears there. All I think right. that, was, that was me. Sorry, Jim. It's okay. I love it. Oh. All right. <laughs> Who is that? Was that you, Sue? Oh, my God. You have to write down that time. I think uh, soup just got yeah. a visual. We're going to leave it. We're going to leave it. All right, some housekeeping items here. Amber, thank you for sending this in, Mayor. Amber, happy anniversary again. Drivers have been stating that the tickets are not showing up on their settlements or they are missing loads. Linda called one of the drivers this morning who advised them they were missing tickets, and she found out that he has been exiting the ticket before it actually says upload complete. There have been multiple drivers Linda has contacted whom stated they're doing the same thing. Can you please let them all know that in order for the ticket to complete, they must wait for Toro to advise upload complete. If they do not see upload complete status, it will not upload and it will remain blank. This creates extra work for dispatch and for us upstairs when we are trying to get payroll processed. Thank you in advance to everyone. That makes sense. Yeah. Yep. I did notice like on a desktop using Toro, um, I went to change somebody's phone number the other day and you just change the number and then don't do anything else. It's not like... Isn't that weird? Not submit, not I like always, complete. You always want to finalize it, yeah, right, it's Jim? Like, yeah, it felt so open-ended to me. I'm yeah. like, ah. So you got to get out of it and get back in to make sure it took mm. your change, but... I just thought that was interesting. Yeah, I think that's like a new, because no matter all those programs we've used up to now, or as we become computerized, it always. Are you sure you want to do that? Are you sure you want to do that? Are you, you know, yeah, don't do that. Check. It's going to cause that. You know, and it's kind of like QuickBooks Jam. You can make lots of changes, and it gives you some warnings here, but otherwise, you can just make a change and go on your way, yeah. and you're just like, really? Huh. So yeah, we want to talk about uh, holiday pay because we got Thanksgiving coming up. As a reminder. In order to receive holiday pay, you must work your scheduled shift before and after the holiday to get paid, okay? What we mean by scheduled is if you don't have approved time off scheduled, you have to work the day before and the day after the holiday, your scheduled days. So, now, So coming up, that's yeah, Wednesday, Wednesday and, and Friday. Right? Wednesday and Monday, I think. Wednesday and Monday. Oh, because we're, we're off Friday, right? right. Yep. Okay. But if we'd have to work, you're right. right. So yeah, yeah, Wednesday and Monday, exactly. Now, if you put in for time... Tuesday or Tuesday, basically. Tuesday, yeah. Yeah, Tuesday or Tuesday, or excuse me, Wednesday or Tuesday, and it was approved, you're not penalized. You still get your holiday pay. Yep. Okay? And if you're new around here for new employees, your holiday pay starts when your benefits kick in. But that the is first, that? The first day of the month after you've been here 60 days. Right on. Yep. But a lot of guys that day, like Wednesday's probably booked, Jim, right? It's probably blacked, blacked out, out at this point. Yep. So if you Tuesday, you come to us and ask for that day off because it's been blacked out because people were proactive, mm-hmm. it, you and you go ahead and take it off, you're not getting right. your holiday pay. Yeah, so basically if you ask for time off on a blackout date and it's denied and then you still take it off, I mean, that's basically unapproved time off. It's yep. just like a call out. Yep. Yep. So... Beep, beep, beep. I have an emergency announcement. <laughs> Let's go. I'm looking up the information on this runaway truck ramp, fellas. Oh, okay. <clears throat> and uh, a huge notice that we need to announce is there during construction, which is supposed to start in November of 23, and it says between the 13th and 15th is when they're going to start. So uh, the speed limit is going to be lowered from 45 to 40. Ooh. Ooh. Right? For everyone? Cars too? No, trucks. Oh. Yep. So, so speed limit for freight vehicles will be reduced from 45 miles per hour to 40 miles per hour from exits 253 to 258. Okay, so let me just ask, and I know you're reading it, Dave. 
So we have <laughs> we have a runaway <laughs> truck ramp, right? That we're going to eliminate while they build it a new one. The solution to that is to lower the speed limit to 40. If you lowered the speed limit to 40 in the first place, would you need a one runaway truck ramp? Well, if everybody need, obeyed it. Would you need a runaway I mean, truck ramp if everybody just does 45? I mean, what do we preach about? I, that's what I'm asking. I'm like, what good does that do? Yeah. The yeah. speed limit used to be 35. I just know that's And we still be, needed a ramp, right? We always yeah. had the ramp, yeah. yeah. So I guess I the, just know that's going to be a triple whammy for everyone. Now the speed limit's not 45, it's 40. So if you get caught over that, because what did we decide? What kind of a ticket is that? If you get caught over 45 there, was that a uh, six-point violation? It it's is, a major moving violation. Yeah, it's called dis... Like, this isn't the right term, but it's this is what it was. Because we had a driver that got this yes. ticket because he was going down the hill towards Fry too fast. It's like disregard of a road traffic, sign. Yeah, traffic. Yeah, traffic. Sign. Right, device but probably. But is. that's not a two-point ticket. It's a no, it's no, a major. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was yeah. a huge fine. I think he had like plus, a $75 fine. Plus, you're going to be in the construction zone now because it's under construction. Exactly. Ooh, so you're going to be triple screwed. So yeah. guess what? Yeah, double fine. And where, ladies and gentlemen, you know, with, with all what we've talked about. The speed limit is 40 miles per hour So now. when they say fines are doubled, it's not only points. It's the monetary fine as well. It's both. It, oh, exactly. Yeah. But as we're talking about this, where do you think a state patrolman would sit? In a runaway truck ramp. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think this will be easy for the state patrol to catch somebody? Oh, they'll yeah. be there every day. Yeah. The yeah. thing is, too, he's going to be sitting which, there and watch a big truck go by and go, dumbass. Which, dumbass, yeah, which, which dumbass. he has every right to write as many tickets as he can. Oh, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. The thing Smart is, though, guy. too, is split speed limits have proven to be dangerous. You know, so, I mean, I understand we can't have trucks coming down the hill at 65 miles an hour because that's super dangerous. But 45 is already slow enough with its 20-mile-an-hour difference in yeah. speeds. Mm-hmm. That's been proven yeah. to be dangerous. So now they're going to make it even worse. You know? Yeah, yeah, Jam. It did not, you know. The people that are writing these things just don't drive big trucks or work for JFW. The good news is the guy that hit Veronica won't be out there anytime soon to hit us again. Boy, that's well, no doubt. How do, you know? how, do you, how do you know that? Well, I guess if his one leg gets healed up, maybe he will be. I don't know. Well, I don't you know how you have that have you ever driven an automatic? <laughs> <laughs> I don't need two legs. <laughs> I mean, I think the guy drove home from the hospital. I think that's what kind of idiot this guy is, Dave. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe he Ubered. Because <laughs> I, mean, I think that was his last vehicle. Yeah. The good, I don't think uh, it was his first one. I mean, the good news for that kid, if there is good news, is he's young and he's probably not even really. I mean, he broke his leg, but he's probably walking around on his cast. Yeah. And, He's a yeah. little skater dude. Physically, he's going to be fine. Yeah. 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 And I'm but, sure mentally he's going to be fine. And financially, it, too. Yeah. yeah. But his yeah. license he has was... no sus- repercussions, right? Yeah. yeah, and his license was suspended while he was driving anyway, right? Uh, he, was, could- he was driving under revocation for driving with no insurance before yeah. the accident. See, that just... Gosh. Yeah. Yeah, he yep. won't have a license for a couple of years. The thing yeah. that the thing that I've really learned this week and we'll, not we'll stop him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, it, it's hard being a good people is what I've yeah. learned since. Oh, this last ninety days, honestly, and just with some of the things even this week, the good people lose. The good people lose. Cause I mean, because we, fo- we follow the rules, Jim. Right? I mean, and I, I don't want to say I, I don't want to be negative because honestly. I feel like we do win eventually, and ultimately, we we're win. able to sleep at night just fine. We know we put our shopping carts away, you know, but, man, it's it just, when you have good and bad with the court system, it just seems like it's so hard for the good people to to get what they deserve. You, I, mean, I, mean, I just, think you need to dive in and explain it, yeah, Jim, because okay. we're being pretty vague. Yeah, and yeah. It's not so I'll give, you, I'll give you two examples, okay? Well, I'll give you three examples. One... <laughs> I'm going to write them down. Wait, I'm going to give you four examples. <laughs> One, we'll talk about... I think we have about 30. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. We'll talk about Veronica's accident, okay? We were hit from behind. We were doing nothing wrong. The trailer repair is going to be $19,000, okay? The kid who hit us driving under revocation for no insurance, we're not going to be able to get anything from this kid, right? The way our insurance is set up, we, we have a $25,000 deductible, even if it wasn't our, if, if it wasn't our fault, this kid doesn't have insurance. Well, guess what, JFW, you got to pay for your own repair. That's one thing. Now we could sue him. We could do all these things, but if he claims bankruptcy, 
we won't be able to collect them money civilly. Yeah. But perhaps we can we can do something else with those restitution where we, we may be able to get that. So uh, it's just a mess. So here we are, the good people. We have insurance. We're driving around doing the right thing. We were obeying the speed limit. We were breaking it down for an accident ahead of us. We get hit from behind and we lose. Absolutely. Right? We lose There's, all the way around. And nothing, nothing happens to that kid. Right. Not a damn thing. Yep. Unless, Where, unless where's the we attorney's try to do some. billboards right. and commercials saying, hey, I'll help you sue, sue a POS? Right. Let's stand up for our rights. Right. Let's eventually do enough of this that we lower our insurance rates because we're going after POSs like this and not allowing them to continue to live their lives. Because yeah. you just said it, Dave. This kid didn't have a license when he hit us. It's going to be revoked even more. And he's going to go out and still drive again. He's going to yeah. go buy a POS car because yeah. he's a POS guy. It's easy because he doesn't need insurance. Yeah, he exactly. Drive. He yeah. saves right. 1500 bucks from yeah. his job at wherever... And and goes out and does it again, and there's zero recourse. And right. our rules and laws that have been put in place are to protect those guys, yep. and it does nothing but harm us. And when it it's not just us, it's not just JFW. If you're paying for automobile insurance, you're paying for this jackass. Yep. Your rates right. are high because you're paying for this jackass. Right. right. Example number two: We have an accident. We're at fault. I don't want to call it a fender bender because it was significant. It was low speed. I mean, nobody was transported. Uh, the car did need to be towed, and it was our fault, right? Girls totally find out we hit at the scene. Next thing I know, insurance calls me. She wants to settle for $35,000. Where did they get that number from? Well, it's either six to $12,000 to fix her car. No problem. We, we'd want to repair that. We caused the accident. She wants three months of rental cars because that's how long it's going to take to get the parts in. But then also... Uh, understandable. Understandable. We owe that. Right. And then she wants 66 chiropractic visits in the next six months. Okay. So it comes out to like $31,000. She wants to settle for thirty five. Okay. Like we don't really have a choice because if she does call Frank Azar or does get an attorney involved... They're going to side with her because we're the big truck company, right? Yeah. The kicker is, I do a little research, find her on LinkedIn. She was discharged from the Army for having a severe spine injury, <laughs> right? So she was already jacked up, right? It's just another example. We hit a car at, I'm going to call it one miles an hour. We stopped at a red light. There was a car in front of us. The driver's foot came off the brake, tapped the car. This guy's claiming an injury and a bent frame on his BMW. Just totally lying, right? But we got to spend our money defending this. It's, yep. It just never ends. Another example, we had a guy working here that no longer works here. Well, I'm going to call it in retaliation. He went to scrape the name off the side of his truck and just dug right into the pane of the, of the, of the, of the door. Who's going to pay for that, right? This guy has a history of being dishonest, not doing the right thing, lying like he can't help it, we'll never get that money from him. Who loses? We do. Right? Well, can we take it out of his last paycheck? No, that's illegal. You can't you can't take money earned away from somebody, even if they screwed you and like even that though they purposely and heinously destroyed right. our yeah. property. Willful destruction of property. Absolutely. The law's on his side. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. it's just hard being a good person. It is know? very hard being a good person. Yeah. Do you want to add the mechanic to that? When well, Jose was attacked down at 7-Eleven in the service oh, truck. Oh, yeah, you love that. Guy. You, you tell that one really good. Yeah. <laughs> we had a mechanic. It's been two years ago now. Left Yard 23 or the West Yard maybe at that time. It was coming back here. Stopped at the 7-Eleven there on Holly and 56th. It's like midnight. A homeless guy just freaks out in there. Goes off on everybody. Chases him out. I think he I think he even had a knife in his hand and the driver run or the mechanic runs and jumps in the service truck. The guy as he hits the door because you know the mechanic's so scared he runs and jumps in and just the speed of the guy hits the door, you know, the mechanic locks it, but it kind of scrapes his foot, getting his foot in the door as the door's being slammed closed. You know, and he locks the door so the guy couldn't get to him. So he totally busts the windshield, 
hitting the windshield with his fists, totally dents the hood, hitting it with his fists and arms, totally destroys the door. $3,500 damage from this homeless guy. The police show up. They don't even take the homeless guy because they say it does them no good to arrest him because he's destitute. So I go off on the cops the next day when I get a hold of it, get him out here like, hey, we need we need restitution, blah, 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 blah. And he's like, well, you have insurance. And I said, well, yeah, we have insurance, but we have a deductible. So we're paying out of pocket. And he goes, but you have insurance for that. And I said, yeah. And he goes, well, the law is if you have insurance, you're just supposed to use your insurance because he's destitute. He's homeless. So where 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 did we go wrong as a society? How is this right? You know what I mean? We should have billboards and commercials everywhere that are protecting us from these things, not the other way around that says, hey, sue a trucker, they hit you. It's just wrong. It's it's sad. Yep. And I hate to say it, but that's where your vote counts. Oh, you guys have just convinced me to just be a jerk. I'm, I am done being a nice guy. <laughs> right? Just, I'm going to go out there and wreak havoc. And you should just carry a gun and take him to the train station. Cause discontent. And- well, on a, on a side note, because that's, <laughs> that's pretty depressing, we were at the store the other day, and um, you know we all talk about the shopping cart, right? And you know all the stores now, well, not all the stores, but most stores have the little basket, the little carry basket. Oh, yeah. You know, so there's one outside on the curb. <laughs> Holly made me pick it up and take it back <laughs> to the store. I'm like, Holly made you? Uh, Holly was, she goes, I didn't see it at first. She goes, see that? I said, yeah. I said, do you want me to pick it up? And she goes, yeah. What so if, so what how if did Holly it get left it? on the curb, Jim? Do you think somebody carried the, I don't know. Cause do you, you think they pulled their car up there and unloaded the basket into the car? Yeah, I think they just bags. Set the car yeah. down on the curb. Yeah, because yeah, no, no, yeah. no oh, bags. Right. Yeah, because yeah. 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 usually yeah. you leave them inside, right? Yeah, or you right. you st- put your stuff in a bag like you're asking. But yeah, it was outside. And, yeah, right at the checkout yeah. stand. Yeah. 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 yeah, Holly just noticed it, and I'm like, ah. No, okay. what, if, what if Holly wasn't there, though, and you saw I, it? I didn't see it at first, Jam. What if you saw it? Holly isn't there. What do you do? I think I would have walked past it, Jam, honestly. Yeah. I don't, no, I'm I, no longer you draw the, person. You draw the I'd kick it into the street. No, I just, it wouldn't have made, it, it wouldn't have dawned on me that it was out there for that store. You know, oh. I just wouldn't have, because oh. when she first said it, I'm like, Oh, that somebody carried their like you're asking, Dave. Yeah. How to get out there? Yeah, that would have been. It's the, just an uncommon place, and exa- it didn't make sense. Exactly. So, and, yeah, yeah. And I was like, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Good, good call. But yeah, it just again, you yeah, know what? We can buy our bread in a plastic bag, and our milk in a plastic container, and our donut holes in a plastic bag, and put our vegetables in plastic bags. But we can't get plastic bags when we check out. Mm. <laughs> uh, we're getting our oceans. I know you got to leave. Well, an hour and 10 minutes, so I'm just going to keep it moving here. Let's roll. Cool. I just want to go over our item in the attendance policy. Okay, we do require seven days notice for all time off requests. Can you put in a request under the seven days? Occasionally, and we can make that work. But don't assume that you could put in a request for the next day and it's going to be approved. Don't assume that you could give us three days notice and it's going to be approved. Sometimes we can't pull it off, right? And if it's not approved, that'll be unapproved time off for you, okay? That's disqualification from your attendance bonus and disqualification from PTO earnings for the month. Just want to make that clear. Because it happens more and more. You know, it's like, you know, we had a driver, you know, it's like 12 p.m. Hey, I need off at 1 tomorrow. Well, we can't pull that off for you. Then he puts in a request, you know, we already had the discussion. He gets home that night and puts in a, a, a request for time off. And it's like... We've already talked about it. It's not going to work. You know? Yeah. Yeah, Jam. It's, it's, yeah. It's a bummer. It's being abused, but we, you know, for again, for all the guys that kind of use our system correctly, yep. you know, and then we have the guys that are just, you know, guys and gals that are just asking for those dates. And I know how much you work at trying to oblige those, mm. those situations and those, you know, being asked for. And you just can't. Yep. And most things, I mean, when we do get hit with that, and, you know, unless it's like emergency to the dentist, you can't get in places without planning it right. today. It just doesn't work that way. So when you come or ask Jam, you know, hey, I need to be off. My doctor called and wants me in tomorrow. Right. That just doesn't happen, right. you guys. That's not, that's not, even if you're getting bad news, they usually have to schedule it. Right. Yeah. yeah. We, we, so here's the thing is we have people here that have some serious problems, but somehow they manage to communicate about them. 
and, and give and us schedule. notice. And, yep. Yeah, so the emergency, I got to, you know, take my goldfish to the vet just doesn't work, you know. Yeah, it's, it. yeah. Jam, can I leave early tomorrow? You can do whatever you want. <laughs> I got because usually once you gotta leave, get scrappy in for her perm and nails done. <laughs> once you leave, I usually sneak out like fifteen. Minutes <laughs> oh, it's gone. It's time to go. Well, you know, I I really want to explain why we have these rules in place. Yeah. It's because we have a business to run, we have customers to take care of, we have loads to haul, and we need people to do it. Whether that person is a dispatcher or a mechanic or a driver, wash bay. Or a wash bay guy, and right. we, we really? have a job to do, and to do it, it takes yeah. everybody. That's the true. other thing I, I want to explain is we try to make it black and white because we don't want to play God. You know, let's say I have a driver, you know, that I really like, Brother Jim, okay? And then he asks for time off tomorrow, and I'm like, okay, no problem, Jim, I got you. But then Brother Dave comes along and says, hey, I need time off tomorrow. And, eh, you know the what? driver he doesn't like. Yeah. <laughs> brother, brother, brother Dave, you, you, you rubbed me wrong the other day. You hit one of my raw spots, and I'm not going to prove that for you. Ah, I'll use lotion next time. There you go. So we need to <laughs> – that's messed up, dog. <laughs> we, we try to keep it even. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. one of the comments I got the other day, like the driver's like, hey, I need off by one tomorrow. Sorry, we can't do that. Well, my family is always going to come first. Okay, fine. That's fine. But it's going to be on approved time off. You know, unless unless your mom, dad, sister, or or daughter or son dies, like it's unapproved. Yeah. That's just it. We're not telling you, you can't go. We're not telling you you're fired because of it, but you have disqualified yourself from earning PTO and your attendance bonus. And honestly, the people with the emergencies, a lot of times they're not emergencies. They just want to go home. So. Yeah, I, hate, I I mean. I'm going to use an example, and I guess you can hit the pause button, Jam, if you don't want me to. Just but don't say a name. You say whatever you want. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's just personally about you and your mom. Oh. I mean, last week when we went over that, you know, she fell, she broke her hip, she cut her head, she went to the hospital, she ended up in having a hip replacement, you know, got the stitches in there when you spoke to her, you know, and, and not that you wouldn't have wanted, you cared about the situation, but she asked you, what were you going to do if I if I called you and wanted you home from your hunting trip? What right, right. what were you going to do for her, Jam? And in in some of those cases, that's what you have to look at. Uh, to me, and that's the way we, Dave. This is a business to run. You know, your mom's got a family to run. You know, she knows you you need to work and you have your own priorities. You know, if, if she got the news that the operation's not going to go good. Right. I think she's going to call you. Right. Life or death. Yeah. Life or, life yeah. or death. You need, you need to come home because things aren't going well. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 You'd be there. And, and I guess that's that. I, I like that comment you made. And, you know, I've met your mom a couple of times and I get that, yeah. you know, and hey, it will be all right. Yeah. You know, some things aren't an emergency. And I don't want to take away from, you know, when people think they need to be there. But right. gosh, it's sometimes you dig your hole. You know, when, when Al Fry was here, you know. What's the best way to stop digging a hole? Stop, stop digging shoveling. a hole. <laughs> stop shoveling. Yeah. yeah. You know, stop digging. I mean, so. it's along the same lines. You and I just talked about it a week ago. We were crossing uh, 53rd up here at Quebec, and there was an automobile accident. And they'd mm. been there a while. They they were there when we left the intersection. They were there when we came back through the intersection. And you could tell the, the one person that was in the accident driving the rear car or whichever car they were in, they had called all their family. Uh, and like all the family had just shown up and they were hugging and and everyone was all right right there was no ambulance there no one was getting carted (laughs) off cars were going to be towed right Right. shit was broke up but everybody was fine and you could see clearly mom and dad you could see brother sister you could see you know all the extra cars parked along the side where they'd shown up to the accident no work got done that day (laughs) no work got done that day and 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 it's not about the work jam it's truly not we live in such a now society, rewind 20 years, that person would have dealt with that accident by themselves. Right. Couldn't have got a hold of a soul. Yeah, there was yeah. no phones. There was right. no cell phone. You didn't, you didn't, I don't want to say panic because I don't think that's probably the right description, but, you know, the first thing you do is like call, oh, mom, I was in an accident or, oh, dad, I was in an accident or, you know, and then, I mean, there were multiple cars there. Siblings showed up on their own. Right. Mom and dad and siblings were not all home together right. with the amount of cars that were parked there. And that's they're like, hey, I'm going to go do something after we go pick up 
such and such. Right. You know what I mean? Which truly means it wasn't an emergency. And I get, it's just odd to me, right? I, nobody you know, had, we don't live like that. Either they all work nights and nobody had jobs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they were pretty nice cars. So either they're selling crack or somebody had a job. <laughs> That's a good job. Yeah. Or, or maybe they hit a truck. And I was going to say, or, or they had an accident with a big truck and they got <laughs> paid. They don't or, have to work every or day. Or who, who was the guy that worked there? They were they were finding love on Colfax? What, what was his <laughs> Finding <thing>? love on <laughs> Colfax. <laughs> what was who his, was that guy? How did he say that, Dave? You helped him get his license back. And you ask him, what were you going? What are you going to do if we don't? Oh get yeah, your if you lose back? your license, that was the question. He goes, I guess I'll find love on Colfax. <laughs> yeah. wow. That's what he said. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, who was that? Uh, uh. No, uh, because we helped him get his license back, or you did, Dave. You went down to Pierce and everything. Yeah. I forgot got about his, that. Yeah, wow. got his back. Another housekeeping item from Joanne: Were Toro drivers enter and upload their tickets when Amber reviews and invoices? Once she is done invoicing on Monday, usually around 1.30, I can start pulling the driver's settlements and email them to the guys. Once I do this, I pull my Paycom export, which has all the tickets for that pay period, and I import into Paycom for the converter to work its magic. That thing must be magic. <laughs> <coughs> we have to have a hard cutoff time of 9 a.m. because of all these steps. If anyone enters late, enters late uploads late, and Amber fixes her invoices, that will mess up my reports that I've already pulled that I need to start from scratch. Basically, they should be entering tickets daily per load, actually, so there should not be any tickets ever not entered. If they have issues with the connection or entering in general, they need to come in that day and see one of, the, one of us or even ask dispatch. We do not look at every single ticket, so it's their responsibility to make sure everything is correct and uploaded. Now, once I send out the driver settlements and there is a ticket on there that needs corrected, we will always fix this for them and I will manually enter it, this into my spreadsheet. But if they are missing a ticket, they will have to wait until the next week to get paid on it. Once I lock that pay period, anything entered, invoice will show up on the next period I create. So I get it. Just enter your tickets every load. Make sure you get that upload complete. Uh, notice and you shouldn't have any problems if there's a problem come in and fix it that day right if you fix it after the cutoff you're just gonna have to wait till the next week to get paid we will absolutely pay you for the week for the work that you did but if you're not checking up on your stuff it just may have to wait cross your t's and dot your i's uh oh yeah. i see it coming <laughs> yeah i want to get up on my soapbox because it just it just upsets the hell out of me and joanne was so nice about this but what, what do you, what, that whole statement you just made, what do you guys think about that? Do I mean, your job. How, right? Bill Belichick, do your job. Right? And we got a cutoff date of, a, of 9 o'clock Monday? Who, who's hauled loads at before 9 o'clock on Monday? <laughs> I mean, why, why are the, why, we have a cutoff of 9 o'clock. Does somebody explain that to me? When should your tickets be turned in? Every load. Right, so and we we turn in our tickets. We turn in Monday's before. tickets, like before nine o'clock. I mean, I'm just I'm how stupid. Turn your damn tickets in, you know. And and I tell you what, if if we miss a ticket, oh my God, have we had over years the drivers upset with us? I didn't get paid, and I did that load, you know. And if it was our mistake, oh my God, we're 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 the worst company in the world. And here we can't even get people to turn in tickets, and we're giving them a nine o'clock. When you do a load, do your tickets, or at the end of the day, do your tickets. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd like to just, because I can, take that statement away. Is 9 o'clock doesn't work. Your tickets aren't turned in the day you did the load. Yep. You don't get paid. There How's that? I'm good with it. It's part of hauling the load. R right? Right. I mean, like it's like doing your post trip is part of doing our job. It's doing your job. You know, I, I just, I can't, I can't make it serious enough. That should never happen. If there's a mistake, if it didn't upload, yeah, let's work through it. But I, that should be so very little. I just can't picture like leaving knowing that my paperwork isn't complete the right way. Because if there isn't, and, and this is maybe a pride thing, but if there's a mistake on my paycheck, I don't want it to be my fault. Right, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like I did my part. Pay me. Well, that's what I'm trying to add. What late load needs to be turned in before nine o'clock Monday? What late load? Right. I I I, I, had, I, I don't get it. Yeah. You know, and I, it's just 
Yeah, thank you, Joanne, for all your hard work. And I mean, these guys, nobody sees them, you know, and 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 everybody thinks the wash bay, you know, and we we see their shiny trucks, we think the drivers, but nobody's thinking these guys for kicking out a payroll of you know four hundred loads a day, and we can't get a little help from the drivers. You know, so that makes their job easier. We've changed programs. We've tried this. We did Paycom. We're always searching to try to take the load off of them and try to eliminate mistakes. And we can't even get a picture of a ticket turned in. Is that just, it just sounds horrible. And it, it's, it, it just, that makes me sad. <laughs> that, that, isn't we isn't can't, we can't do it? attached to billing as well though so absolutely dave we, we we have to make sure that we get paid so we can pay them that was part of the toro thing is once the ticket once the the ticket is done by the driver it is set up to be um billed or invoiced dave mm -hmm. you know and that's the helpful part of that mm -hmm. but again if we're missing tickets you know for just for just a picture that you wait to upload i i you know we've we offer so much, and then yet it's still not done. And I, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of guys that'll listen to this. Go, well, you know, what an asshole he sounds like, you know. But it just seems so simple to me to 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 take care of that part, to fix that, and do it. And we're 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 given concessions. <laughs> right. Please, please turn in your ticket by nine o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> and moving on that you haul, that you hauled I, I can't yeah, move on <laughs> that you hauled Friday Saturday or Sunday could you turn it in by Monday hmm. or Monday well maybe or you hauled Tuesday. it maybe you or hauled Wednesday. it Wednesday or Tuesday the week before right. could you please turn it in by Tuesday I forgot oh I, I'm sorry it's Monday by 9 o'clock not Tuesday well you only need to tune it, turn in from <laughs> 9.30 Monday through Saturday <laughs> before the following Monday at 9 a.m. Exactly, exactly. Right? So you can save <laughs> all your tickets after 9 o'clock Monday until Monday before 9 I'll do them Sunday. Well, wait a minute. The game is on. Man, you guys are confusing me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right, Dave. Let's move on. It's just, it's just so important and we can't do it. Well, moving on, I'm going <laughs> to hand this next one over to you, Jim. Again? Yep. Me? Yep. Do I need to turn the page? What it, was it? Yeah. Oh. Yep. <laughs> All right. So go down to the number two. Yeah. Yeah, that's where yeah. you'll start. Okay, thanks, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we just notify, need to notify everybody, and everybody should be aware of it. It started last, <laughs> last year, the FMLI. Um, that was part that JFW pays for part of that. And uh, you pay for part of that out of your paycheck. Started last year. They're trying to build the fund. Um, starts in 2024 that this FMLI will be available. All we've done is we're no longer with the state. That's not who's going to be our, uh, our third-party administrator or second-party administrator. Um, we went with Lincoln. A lot of people are familiar with Lincoln. They handle our dental and vision. So we just need to make an announcement that our FMLI will be handled by Lincoln. If you have any questions about it, uh, you can get with Joanne, and we can give you a number to to Lincoln, and they can explain all the details if you ever need FMLI. So, perfect. Just quick announcement about that. Awesome. And speaking about healthcare, uh, we are changing uh, providers once again because we are getting in a better plan. We're always trying to improve things around here. We've been walking, working towards the big best plan, and uh, switching back to Cigna is going to help us get there. You know, hopefully in the near future. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, so. I got to add to that, Jam. The you know when Jam says we're trying to you know switch to better coverage, it's always a goal to have better coverage to offer that. But again, you know, we have to look at what what the renewal is. And Kaiser raised us eight um, percent for the year. Our new rule would be eight percent higher. So that means we, ha as JFW, either have to absorb that cost or pass that, pass that on to the employee. By switching to Cigna, there shouldn't be any cost um, increase to the employee. It shouldn't be, and we don't have all the figures, but shouldn't be to JFW or the employee. That's a benefit for all of us. All of us are paying more money for groceries, gas, cars, insurance, all that kind of stuff. And if, and if we can help you out, that's the reason we look at switching. 
um, you know, switching to Cigna, we're, we're going to have some open enrollment dates. We're going to get on it. And I just have to, to mention, you know, the people that are in Kaiser and have some serious things going on, there will be a transition, transition period. It's not easy. Be an act advocate for yourself, but you won't be without insurance. That That's the thing. You'll always have insurance. Cigna will take over your needs, or you may have to be treated by, by Kaiser for a little bit here until you can get your stuff switched. So don't, it, it, it is a bummer, and I'm sure there is some people that like Kaiser. You know, we're... We're, we're, we're not switching because we don't like it. No, no, we're switching because we, we, we can't afford it. That's, Abs- absolutely. That's it I mean, let's, let's get down to the nuts and bolts because... Eight and a half percent doesn't sound that bad. That's how they always sell it. Oh, it's only an eight percent increase. Oh, it's only a six percent increase. Yeah, but that's not on. And then $10. you pull out the calculator, right? <laughs> yeah, it's not eight bucks. Yeah, right. It, correct me if I'm wrong. Wasn't it eighty-eight thousand dollar increase? Somewhere around there. Yeah. So I don't know about you all, but we don't have eighty-eight thousand laying around to spare. Yeah, I mean, I think the big figure was health insurance last year was seven hundred sixty thousand. Wasn't that the, on the deal? Better. Yeah. You know, so and like then, you're saying, you're 88 a year or whatever. Yeah. You're, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it is not an option for everyone. I mean, I know we can sit here and say, well, even if JFW doesn't pay that, let's just forward that to the employees. Look, you're not going to want to pay. F- I mean, that's that's $1,000 more per person per year. Exactly. Who's mm-hmm. going to want to pay that? Exactly. No one. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And isn't it true, and I, I might be wrong, but. Aren't these health insurance companies swimming in money? Oh, Dave, it's ridiculous. I mean, it's just ah, I'm pretty sure it sick. Was, I'm pretty sure it was United Healthcare, the one meeting we had with them, and we're going <laughs> over all this stuff. And the guy's like, "Well, you know, you've cost us some money last year, and us individually as a, as a group, we probably did cost United Healthcare some money because we had some people shocker that were sick, right, Dave? Brother Dave looks up the profit." Of United Healthcare, why the guy is sitting there during the it's meeting? A public Dur- company, yeah, or, it's a public yeah. company during the meeting, and it was like, you Good know, for you, Dave, one, <laughs> one, one, you know, I don't know, seven hundred million they made the year before profit quarter quarter yeah, that was quarter quarter, <laughs> quarter. and you and you're just like for the year they had like a two billion dollar yeah. profit, but there was a loss on us, yeah. You know, so, like, yeah, so, you know. Did point, you look at him and say, get the hell out of here? Yeah, well taken, <laughs> point well taken, Dave, that, yeah. that you know, you can't, you can't single us out when you have all the rest of the customers that are giving you, you know, a quarterly $700 million profit. Yeah. You know, it just doesn't make sense. And, you know, personally, we've mentioned it. Healthcare is a scam. It, it sucks, you guys, the, the. No Do, one wins. Really is. Doing this every year is just, it's the worst time of year. It ruins the holiday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just listen to some Christmas music. It'll help you out. There's uh. definitely been plenty of meetings about it. And you've been part of it now, Jam, for the last, well, since you Five come years, back. But, yeah. you know, we, we ask everybody, what do you think? What do you think? And it's just so difficult to figure out, isn't it, Jam? It is. Yeah, sometimes you think you're on a good path and... Brother Dave points out that we're not. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the disheartening part, Jim. Yeah. You know, I feel like, and I do believe we've made great strides oh, yeah. with with who we're associated with now. Yes. You know how we're trying to climb up this ladder. We're trying to deal with with better brokers. You know, and 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 our participation and all of that. And you know, when we switched to Flood and Pete, I truly felt, hey, we've we've you know, got a great association with a great group of people here, and they are. They've been amazing for us. But it's in inherently slimy in their DNA when you're an insurance salesman, you know, because everything they kept telling us yesterday during that whole Zoom event is we're saving you $16,000 on this, and we're saving you $16,000 more on this, and another $6,600 on this, and combined... That's X amount of savings. And what no one realizes is that's a savings that they're doing in comparison to the new rate increase that Kaiser gave us. Yeah, the 8%. No one compared it to the current mm. Kaiser pricing we're currently paying. Right. Right? There's no flipping savings in the new program <laughs> going forward. We're still getting a price increase. We're just going to try and absorb it ourselves and not go with the $88,000 increase. Right. 
So it's like, oh my gosh, you guys, it's it's like once you've become a used car salesman, you're always a used car salesman. And I think once you get in healthcare, you're always a healthcare salesman. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know how you how you pull that out because they don't ever want to talk a number. It's always a percent, right? It's only an 8% increase. And seriously, when you hear that, what sounds less, 8% or $88,000? Right. 8%. I would much rather have an 8% increase than an $88,000 increase, which is happens to be the same well, thing. You always have to say, of what? Right. right? Exactly, Dave. Exactly. But they don't ever do that. <clears throat> ever. You know? Yeah. So it's it's just, it's hard, man. And to find a deductible that works for everyone and a plan that works for everyone and doctors that work for everyone. And then, you know, Brother Jim and I have the double-edged sword because we have... You know, I'll make total numbers up here. Say there's a hundred people on insurance, fifty of them don't even use it. So we've paid a, a six to eight thousand dollar policy that never got used. But yet, if we use it, and and there's people that have cases out there, we get dinged because they used it. Because we're running hot. Yes, <laughs> and you're like, oh my gosh, scam, 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 slimy, dirty, scam, scam, yeah. scam, scam. Doesn't feel good. I don't like it. But boy, I tell you what, when you're in the hospital in an emergency Mm -hmm. and you're sitting there seeing that hundreds of thousands of dollars are being spent on you, you're usually pretty appreciative of it. You know what I mean? Yep. So, yep. But how many people have that happen? Just a few. Right? Yep. So Ah, moving on. Yeah. So so we go from down to up to down to up. Because what what was was the next? We're, we're about to talk about it, this. right? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Toy drive. Yeah, it's a, roll, it's a roller coaster ride. Okay. <laughs> ching, right. ching, 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 ching. <laughs> 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 All right, we got the toy drive coming up for uh, Fox 31 and Channel 2. Uh, that will be December 14th. So I'm sure we're going to start putting out announcements to collect some toys. Last year was a great time. Uh, the year before was good. And it just keeps going and getting better. I agree. So. Dr. Horton is collecting toys, yep. and we'll be picking up the week that week. Uh, yep. We'll pick up December thirteenth, so we can make the delivery on the fourteenth. Yep. Uh, also, uh, the mm-hmm. Front Range Barracuda Swim Club, ah. uh, Dream Weaver Real Estate, and I so forget the Hand and Stone. Are they doing yeah, it again? Yep, Hand and Stone. Oh, they're Hand and Stone yep, doing it again. Big part okay, of it. yeah, they, great. I didn't know that. Okay, yeah, they're, they're in contact. with, yeah. with Erica. Man, we and need then, to get uh, a list when. When the news, yeah, yeah, and then and you know Erica's and and James's company, um, Paradigm, uh, creative. D- d- you know, Cre- creative. Paradigm Creative Group, yeah, yeah, they're they're actually Erica because she she does it for us, right. but she goes out in toy shops and they donate so much money and JFW show, donates so much money and she goes to like TJ Maxx or one of those places. Cole, uh, Cole, I don't know, Coles doesn't have it, but. Ross or one of the empties them of toys, mm. you know, empties a place of toys. So it's, it's, it's fun. And, and, and in, in the past, we've had so many employees or oh, teammates here that have donated, to see. you know, I, I know it sticks to my mind cause I think he brought in two bikes that one year, but, uh, oh, I just went Vince oh, yeah. brought in the two bikes. Yeah. Um, the one year. And I mean, that's just, I mean, that's, this is, this is the reason we work every day and try to, try to be the best we can so we can participate. In, Listen, there is nothing pro- better than giving a gift yeah. to a child at Christmas. Yeah. Whether you know that child or not, oh, there is oh, no and, better feeling. And just so you guys that. know how it works, and I didn't understand until really last year, um, and like you know, Dave mentioned, this is our third year, and we, we got some toys, and last year we filled the truck up more, and, and Erica's wanting to, to put the pup, hook the pup to the tandem, <laughs> and I'm like... Erica, there is no room for the pup. We can't even get in the parking lot at the oh. at the uh, Salvation Army. That's funny. Um, but last year, because we we just wanted to be part of it, uh, Mikey rode with me. I know Ken showed up. Um, Casey, Casey came down. We had the the lady from Channel Two um, or Fox there. She was with us. Anyway, we unloaded the truck at eight o'clock, seven o'clock, or something into the Salvation Army, and we, they we just put all the toys. On the walls and down the hallways because there were so many. And then the kids can show up and they can just shop mm. is how they do it. Um, they have a day that it's open and any gift you want. and, and That's make, so cool. Right? And makes the kids, you know, for the unfortunate that are down on their luck, that, are, that really need some help and to bring joy to their kids, that, that's, that's what ends up bringing joy to kids. And you can't, 
That that's good stuff. You know, I mentioned it through the podcast. We have so much good stuff. You yeah. know that I hate to complain about somebody not taking a picture of their ticket or healthcare <laughs> or healthcare. Uh, so yeah, yeah. So please, if you if you have the availability, availability, bring some toys, and we're you know you can. There's one already sitting by Linda yeah. down there. And we'll, I noticed that. Tw- yeah. Right, right. Twenty bucks goes a long ways with with toys. Toys. Yeah, yeah. And I, I that I didn't want to mention it, but we between Paradigm and all of us, we're in the thousands of dollars. Right. You know that we that we give to go do that that Erica takes, but that is a lot of toys. I mean, it's good. It is, you know, and I mean, people don't think twice about it, but we also, the whole safety team, you know, dispatch sets up the whole safety team because of their pickups. Mm. They make the runs to the 13 DR Horton locations. They pick up, pick up loads of toys. They bring them back here. 0017, thank you, Jesus, for letting us use your truck. <laughs> It's down for the day, not earning any income, yep. right? Yep. Mikey in the shop decorates it every year, yep. which is all the tinsel and lights. And I mean, it's so freaking cool when it shows up and is on the news. The wash base scrub the freaking thing makes it look like new every year. Yep. I mean, yep. it's it is a lot of expense that that we put into this, and it's a lot of effort, and it's for the kids. But it's so, all right? joy, all yeah. joy. Because yeah. what, what's real, and it happened again last year when we were down there, and I just loved it, is we parked it right in front of the door at Macy's. You can't get into the, the place without walking around our truck. Sure. The news crew's there. But people walked in. I, I'm sure they showed up to do Christmas shopping for other things. They walked in, bought a toy, and brought it back out just to throw it in the truck. Mm. That's awesome. And that, that's that's an open heart right there. Right. That's uh, that's what the Christmas spirit is about. I yeah. like that. Yep. Yep. All right, <clears throat> Eric Burnham. He had uh, something to say here today. He says, "Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the JFW family. I know most everybody is diligent in the operation of their tools that have been placed in front of us. I am bringing up the air gauges in the trucks and how these are a critical component to the tools we use. I know most are calibrated correctly." But for the ones that, excuse me, are not calibrated, anyone from the safety team, trainers, the brothers and operators can show you videos and how to correctly do it. These should be done weekly, especially with the trucks that preload and utilize for the for the operation at cores. Oh, I bring this up because I got a new truck that the other day that was sent to cores and the gauges were reading nothing more than 85,000 on a short trailer. I got under the scale and was 89,800, and the gauges were reading nothing more than 85,000. If it was a long trailer that wasn't calibrated correctly, it would have been well over 92,000. It is a simple process to calibrate and quick and easy. I will not explain the risk factors or damage things can cause. I only ask, please, everybody, to check your gauges regularly. Thank you for your time, everyone, and your consideration of the matter, 0081. Great. Awesome. Calibrate your gauges, people. Even if you don't use them, the guy behind you might want to use them. So. Yeah, I want to, seems like I want to mention something about everything. Yeah. I guess that's reading the podcast. You but. are on the podcast. <laughs> you are a participant. Free, free speech. Yep. Um, I, <laughs> <laughs> it was, it's been several months and I haven't even talked to Jesse since then. Um, and I know Jesse's somebody that calibrates his gauges is on top of that, you know, helps out with a lot of stuff, go-to guy like a, like a lot of the people here. But the one morning he called in and he load, loaded Coors and he was telling Linda that he thinks it's pretty heavy. It was wet. And I got back on the radio and I said, don't you know that it's heavy? And he's like, I, I don't know what his response was, but Jesse, I, I mean, I set him up. He totally missed what I was asking. Because with his gauges, he knows it was wet. So his, his statement needed to be, hey, everybody, it's wet. Right. It's heavy. I'm so-and-so, and I know that. Or I've, you know, I've, lo- I've looked at my gauges. That's the reason I know it's, it's heavy. Right. You know, and, and that is helpful because if you're, if you're loading it and it's been dry like it runs, you're going to be way over, right? I mean, it was a good comment to let everybody know. But, Jesse, you know 
If you're looking in your gauges. Exactly. Yeah, because what's heavier, 27 tons of dry grain or 27 tons of wet grain? <laughs> oh, jam. <laughs> uh, okay, which fills your trailer more? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, but so true, and I, you know, I'm, I have never talked to Jesse after that as such about that, but he's that mad would, at you. He's probably mad at me. He hates me. <laughs> um, Even more so now. <laughs> <laughs> right, I really brought it up. But that's the, that's the deal. He's talking about his tools on here, Eric is, right. and the tools we've given him. There is your tools. You know you're heavy. And that's the reason Eric Eric made this statement is with those tools, hey, I'm heavy, or it's loading heavy, or I'm, you know, we, we a lot of times, right. not a lot of times, but we've picked up loads that we've contaminated, and the loader's just loading it. And this is a guy, a loader operator that fill, feeds the plant all day. He doesn't know what he's putting on you. Right. Check your gauges. Yeah, for a guy that's counting on a gauge, Eric basically is saying he was counting on those gauges to mm -hmm. get a legal load. Mm -hmm. And because they weren't calibrated, he was set up for failure. Yeah, I mean, if you and, and all the salt we're hauling, we're hauling salt out of state. We're, we're, we've been in Oklahoma with a couple of guys. And as you're getting loaded, how great it, is it to know that... Oh, I think I'll take a pinch. Oh, no, no, wait a minute. I can't take that pinch. Mm -hmm. Or the loader brings you a pinch and goes, I've weighed it. Where do you want it? Yeah. Front, back, middle, you know, on the deck plate. Who, who knows? Right. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just, it is very important. It's a, it's, I wish, you know, here's a comment that I know we've had comments on. Back in the day <laughs> when I drove, wish we had gauges, right, Super? Oh, man. <laughs> it, you had it's to just, wing it. <laughs> it's just so nice to deal with someone that's good at their craft, too, yeah. as, right. as an operator. You know, I mean, it's it's been years. We were at yard uh, the West Yard, JFW West, and we, we just built the salt bin over there, and we were getting everything dialed in. And we had, I don't know, a big order come in, and I was over there. So I hopped on the loader, and, man, I'll get you close with five full buckets, but I don't know where it needs to be. We were going through the port. You know what I mean? It was like first, first kind of vision of what was going on and potter wheeled up there in his truck and he goes hey put three in the nose two on the back and he said the last one put it right in the middle and he said i can tell you how much more i can take and i, I dialed him right to like 78 or seventy nine thousand pounds and his axles were perfect nice i mean he told me where to put the material and how much and i was like <clears throat> next guy pulled up i said what do you need he goes i, I need a legal load what <laughs> load me <laughs> yeah right load <laughs> me you should know i don't huh. <laughs> All right, safety topic of the week. <laughs> Brought to you by It's none always other been that way. Than <laughs> Casey Guthrie. <laughs> Thank you, Casey. Sorry yeah. to be laughing while we're oh, being yeah. serious. Yeah. Casey wants to point out it's especially an open book this morning. It's an especially important thing to use three points of contact, especially with the winter coming up. I mean you never want to fall, but it's an increased risk in the slippery weather. So Getting in and, your, in and out of your tractors and in and out of your trailers, use three points of contact, please. Yeah, yeah and again, I, I know I've had this conversation. We all have had how many trailers we don't have with the ladders, but the ladders, even though they're there, don't be lax. Oh, you man, know, three for points. Sure. I mean, they, they really should eliminate somebody from falling, mm -hmm. but you still got to step up and over and get on the ladder mm -hmm. out of the trailer. And then the liners, <laughs> we joke you, you're trying to shovel and hold on to a rail yep. and push the snow out right. so you don't fall. Just please be and careful. Walking and walking like you have poopy butt. Yeah, in that, yeah. in that, you know, in on the liner and stuff. And this is so important. And, you know, I know we've mentioned it. We talked about, um, oh, man, lost his name. Jumped off the side of the truck. Oh, the Marty. Tire. Marty, you know, jumped off mm. the side of the truck there and twisted his ankle. and Backwards? Yeah, just... Just With one pay, eye. Pay attention. We you can't afford to be <laughs> he broke his ankle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can't afford to be off and, and we can't afford to have you off. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Being off is no good. Yep. Thanks, so. Casey, for reminding us. Yep. Absolutely. Also, um, I don't know how many trailers we have left with no ladder. Just I know when I see him jam, I, I I mean, I'm to the point when I do see him, I'm like, oh, that sucks. Yeah. You know and what I mean? Because it's I've had a few drivers complain about it actually. I bet. Like, I yeah, bet. you need to fix that. Also, if you're newer and you you're in a trailer and it doesn't have the ladder and you got to step on a hub of the wheel to get up, I had a driver tell me the other day like he he's not really crazy about climbing out on that tire because it it spins. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> well, there's an easy way to fix that. Yep, just set your trailer brakes. You know, so you know if you are climbing in and out of those trailers, it is a lot easier with that trailer trailer brake yes. set. Yes, yep. yep, absolutely, Jim. Good point. All right, tips and tricks from Ray Davis.
<clears throat> mountain driving in winter weather. It's that time of the year when we gotta t- when we gotta drop a gear or two and just slow it down. Driving in the mountains, we need to check that we have everything before even heading up. Have you checked your chains? Check to see that you have your chain key. Bungee cords, a warm jacket, and good warm gloves. You can always check CDOT to see if the chain up law is in effect in the early mornings. Remember, keeping your speed down on snow, ice, and rain covered roads to maintain traction. Stay off your cruise control. Remember, if your wipers are on, your cruise should be off. You should also increase your following distance to be able to react to the other vehicles ahead of you. Also, remember your overweight is your overweight permit is no good in any adverse driving conditions. Just because it's nice in fair play where you're getting loaded doesn't mean it's nice in Denver. Check your weather before loading heavy. Hope all is well with the JFW family, friends, and listeners. Remember, safety has no blind spot. Look and lean. Sit up in your stool. Don't be a fool. Much love and respect always. Ray Ray, 0013. Thanks, Ray Ray. Yeah, Yeah, thanks, Ray. Good tips. Yeah, I love that tip to you guys. Remember, if your wipers are on, your crews should be off. Because you can slip as easy on rain, you know, hydroplaning, as you can on snow and ice. Yeah. 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 Oh, for yeah. sure. Yeah, it was a great point. And yep. I, and Jake I just, breaks, too. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Especially as good as the Jake breaks are. It uh-huh. all goes hand in hand with your vision, right? I mean, slowing down right. when you can't see that clear, right? Yeah. Don't know what's yeah. going on up ahead. And I and it could have been a different year so far. And I, and I know we were like, oh, we don't want... You know, I don't want to go to fair play in the winter. You know, we heard those comments. And, you know, we're worried about chaining up and we're all this kind of stuff. You guys got to realize we're about to put November in our back pocket. Yeah. And it doesn't mean in the next week we won't have a storm up there, but we're down to 90 days of snow now. Yeah. And it, up in that area, basi- yeah, basically. Yeah. You and know. here's another number. Today we have 80 loads out of fair play. Mm-hmm. We nice. need to get 80 loads today out of fair play. <laughs> nice. That means 80 of our trucks are going. Yep. Yep. So, yep. So there's, you know, I don't want to bring up the bad word. Hardwires, but <laughs> Yikes. Um, you know, um, but yeah, that's I get. I guess that's all. You know, everybody was so worried, is so concerned, and I, I'm just having to point out. We're yeah, ninety days doesn't sound like anything. You know, you got right. December, January, and February, and then it, you know it's starting to warm yeah. up in March. It doesn't mean we won't have a wet May yeah. or a right. snowy May. Absolutely. But, you know, it's it's just it's what we do. We're 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 set up, and you guys are set up as drivers to overcome yep. and we were to conquer. We're, we sure spend a lot of time worrying about one or two times. Yeah, right. that's the, right. <laughs> right. That's right. We have 365 days, but three of them we may need to do okay, something. Okay, this about. will be the third time. You're right, Dave. <laughs> it's a good point because that's what I was trying to say for for one or two times, and November's gone. Yeah, so we've eliminated that one. Yep. 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 What do you think, Soup? You want to hit us with that high road hauling? I'll do that. <clears throat> I think I'll just read it though. Hit us. Hit us with it. High road. So. Up. Oh, Jam's, is, Jam's leaving again. I'm gonna. You should start taking that personal. I know. I know. I so don't know that he could make it to fair play. <laughs> this is a neat story. I think it could happen to anybody at any time. So listen to the story. Think about the moral uh, or, you know, the end result, the right, the wrong, all of that sort of thing. Because, again, it, it's every day. And um, it it's a testament to the way life is nowadays, I guess, and the, the struggle we all face, the, the tension, the pressure um, in, in the modern life that we live today. So anyway, <clears throat> here we go. <clears throat> Last night, <clears throat> <clears throat> boy, <clears throat> excuse me. He's dying. I know. <laughs> I just want to speak clearly so everybody can understand. Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> oh now we're gonna get the giggles <laughs> so last night i was out doing some errands okay i was driving in the right lane minding my own business and a car seemed to purposely cut me off almost causing me to hit it i was both shocked and angry right so i turned on my bright lights <laughs> and i drove right behind him at the next stoplight, I pulled up right beside him, and I was angry. I was pissed. I was going to shoot him. <laughs> Dave. With a oh. rubber band. <laughs> right. <laughs> and he seemed to shout profanities at me. I, I, I couldn't believe it. I rolled down my window and said, really? You're mad at me, and you cut me off. And he said, yes. 
And then he threw his coffee grande at me, and that had cream in it and everything else. <laughs> and it coffee. hit me in the face. <laughs> it it hit went all over my dash because my window was down. The steering wheel went everywhere. I did not know what to do. I was tired. I was angry. But I followed him with my bright light. <laughs> <laughs> oh mercy and i also called 911 to report an assault by another motorist while i was on the phone with the operator i had a change of mind i told her i didn't want the police involved and before i hung up i said i'm fine thank you you know I- i'm good the car turned down an alley quickly trying to lose me but i followed persistently and i had no plan The car pulled over to the right, and a youngish man got out of the car. He didn't look so mean or scary, actually. More sad, really. I sensed I didn't have to worry and wasn't afraid. I got out and said, really? Are you going to throw coffee at me again? And he started to approach me, motioning with his hands to stop. Stay back, I said. And he said, I won't hurt you. I lost my nerve and started to cry. He continued toward me, saying, please don't cry. Please don't cry, he said. I should have not thrown my coffee on you. You flipped me off, and that made me angry. This is my second job today, and I'm delivering pizzas. That's what I do. I'm in a rush like everyone else. This is not who I am. I'm not this guy, he said. I believe you, I said, and I'm not someone who flips people off usually. I'm sorry, I say through my tears. I had. It has been a hard day. And I'm not a bad guy, he says. So this is going back and forth. And I'm not a bad woman, she says. I'm sorry, too. This is not my way. I say, this is not my way either. He goes back to his car and gets a bottle of water. Please drink and have a drink and it'll help you feel better. Then he proceeded to clean my jacket and my car. This is not who I am, he repeats again and again. I have a son. I'm working two jobs. I'm just trying to do my best. As if to start over, I ask, my name is Mia. What is your name? And he says, Mohammed. I am very sorry this happened. Me too, he says. We both hugged and apologized to each other. This is These are turbulent times for our world. I don't want to add to the darkness, I tell him. Me too, he says. We hugged again, both crying. Keep your son safe, I say. Thank you. You stay, stay safe too, excuse me. One last time we apologized and hugged and shook hands and parted ways. So this is a true story that could be told about almost everybody every day. In any misguided situation, it can teach us all a lesson. We should never assume the negative and we should believe in the positive. People are inherently good and don't mean harm to others. When we react out of emotion, Rather than acting using reason, we never make the right choice. And I picked that story today because I really think it it is true to the to the energy, to the tension, to what people face on a daily basis out there. And if we de-escalate those situations, it's a win-win for everybody. Totally. Yep. Absolutely, Dave. Well, good good story. Funny, funny little story. <laughs> that was awesome. Which you, which you don't, which you hope doesn't happen to people, right, Dave? I mean, it just the the whole coffee throwing and all that. Yeah, kind of stuff you know, I mean, it, it applies to us because we're out driving every day, yeah. right? And and I know everybody gets cut off all day long, right? But it also applies to what's going on in the world out there. Mm-hmm. You know, the the war in Ukraine, the war in Israel and Gaza. Um, the tensions between the United States and Russia. Mm. It, it's kind of the big picture. It's not just two cars in traffic, you know? Yeah. Um, and you can apply it everywhere. The little picture, nobody ever wins in road rage. There's no winner, no. right? There's been, and I, I think I've talked about this on the podcast, but there's been cases of two people getting out of their cars to road rage and they shoot each other to death. <laughs> They're, yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. nobody wins. And you got to remember Maybe I've talked about this as well. This is something I teach, but how will how far are you willing to go, and how far is the other willing per, person to go? Super Dave, you may be willing to raise your voice at me, right? But I might be willing to push you. But you might be willing to punch me. But I might be willing to stab you. But you might be willing to shoot me. You know what I mean? You never know how far that other person is willing to go, and it's just not worth it. Mm-hmm. So. 
Yeah, there was a situation, I don't know, within the last couple of years, I think it was during COVID, and it was a road rage incident at a in a parking lot at a store, mm-hmm. and a guy killed another guy, and now that guy is going to prison for the rest of his life. Yeah. That was the one over in Arvada by Plant 11, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. it was right here in town. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah they, they wheeled into a dentist's empty parking that's lot. That's what it was. And it was a woman. Yeah. Yeah, she's... I mean that her sons went to high school with Sam. Wow. Yeah, it was it was a tragedy, man. There was a there was a case down in Florida. A uh, couple pull up, the guy parks in a handicapped spot. Right? Well, the citizen walks by and starts yelling at the girl who's in the passenger seat for being parked in a handicapped spot. Right? Well the boyfriend comes out and starts pushing the guy. Well the guy pulls out a revolver and kills the dude. Wow. Over a parking spot. Right. Right? Like how willing how far are you willing to go? That guy was willing to yell at a girl sitting in the car. Yeah. The boyfriend was willing to beat somebody up. Well that guy was willing to shoot him to death. Like it just never ends. Avoidance, that's the key. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's it's been so many years and I know Dave will remember and I, I don't think I've ever talked about it, Jam. So one of my good friends in high school, he was learning to drive and he was getting on uh, I-70 off of Federal or Pecos at the time, and he accidentally cut somebody off um, learning to drive, Mm -hmm. and the guy ended up shooting at the car and hit his dad that was riding in a passenger teaching him to drive, hit him in the the back of the head or neck area, and uh, he he ended up being uh, mentally disabled from the gunshot. And he was alive, but it was never the same. Never I the mean, same. and Not and, even close to the same. And I don't even know how you, you know, because Jeff, that was the my good friend's name, Jeff. I mean, he kind of suffered with that, that that was his fault the whole time because he cut that person off. And, I mean, you're, you're talking in 80 and 81 is when this happened. And yeah. that, that gun kind of stuff wasn't... And I'm not gun violence, but that that guy was willing to shoot at that car, Jam. Clear back then, right? You know, and and never caught. Nobody, you know, nobody knows, you know. And and then just yeah, certainly no phones back then, no, no not, car cameras back yeah, then, no dash make, cams, yep, no none, none of that yeah. stuff. Yeah, Dave, you're so right. And you know, until you bring the you know bring this up, I, f- I forget about that, yeah. you know, because it's been so long. And his dad passed away too earlier than he, you know he ever should have from from the complications. Yeah. Yeah, so it just, it just, yeah, it's sad, yep. tough. That's where right. we ask to have patience. Yes. Right? You're the professional. Let them in. Let them over. Let them take that spot. Give them the area. Give them the space. Be courteous. Yeah. Because yep. it's way easier. Yeah. It's way less stressful. Yeah, just the other day uh, when we were going to drop Jim's truck off and there was a pickup truck was like trying like not to let me in. I'm like... We're doing two miles an hour. Yeah. It's not like I rushed to the front of the line. Right. To, like, I'm doing my part. Just yep. back up a little bit. Right. You know? So Yeah, where are you going to go? Right. Right? That's the point. Yeah, where are you going to be 20 go? feet there instead of me being 20 feet there. <laughs> yeah. And once you let me in, if you want to pass me, I'll let you back in. Like, Absolutely. Yeah. All right, guys. Final thoughts? Boy, the, the, the silence. Dude. Man. Well, I see <laughs> you have a book, so that's going to be good. Right? Yeah, I I kind of felt bad. Like, I'm way unprepared. And, and so I'm going to wing it here. I'll jump in before Jim, like, does his polished routine for his closing arguments. It's a lot of pressure. Man. Because I just, I just have so many thoughts on, you know, the things we talked about, Jam, where things aren't fair in our society. And it seems like the hardworking people are the only ones that are responsible for things. Mm. The, the destitute or the the people who aren't law-abiding citizens, I feel as though the law protects. Right. And I guess my, my spin that I want to put on that, because it is 100% true, our elected officials are the only ones that can change that. And I know people get so tired of me talking about politics, and I'm to the point I'm tired of preaching it, but our lives are ruled and regulated by who we elect and and all they're concerned about right now is the the freaking greenhouse gas. I'm sorry, they they are so far off on their path that that's all they're looking at. And our society 
it's decaying and it's decaying here in Colorado around us. I mean, you guys have no idea how hard Scooby works on trying to keep the homeless ran off on just the streets around our facility here to keep us safer because it, it's it's bad. When you have a group of those people around, our theft goes up. It goes through the roof. We've already had some batteries stolen. Uh, just many different things. The drugs, that's all what comes with the homelessness uh, and, and theft and violence. And it's just not safe. I mean, we've had a few vehicles rummage through. And this is all based off of our elected officials. And... After going through this election here a couple of weeks ago and, you know, trying to get behind Rich so much and through IPOC, I was involved in some other things that we got behind some other districts that we actually had some wins in, which was super gratifying. And I'm excited to see where we go next year with it and really hope to make some change in Adams County. But my point is only 20% of the people voted. And if, if only 20% of our people voted, it's pretty disappointing and if you want to make change, you have to vote. That's where it starts. And I guess I'm offering my olive branch out to, to explain, I will help you get registered. I will help you change your address. I will help you so the ballots are sent to your house, to your apartment, to wherever you live. I don't care if you're living in your fifth wheel at a, at a by pumps. RV park. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, not by pumps. <laughs> and... Uh, I, that's your address. If you get mail there, I will help you get that ballot delivered to you. I can help you get registered in, in less than five minutes on the internet. And I guess I'm asking, I'm begging, I'm I'm, it, I'm fighting an uphill battle for all of us. But I feel if we don't fight because we're being crushed right now by things that we can't do any more about, we're at our capacity we're at our limits with greenhouse gas emissions. There's nothing more we can do. The rest of the world has to get involved now. Stop choking our industry, our livelihoods, and those things. And the only way to do that is you have to vote. So there's my soapbox. I'm stepping off of it. That's as good as I've got. But all of the things we fight are strictly due to our elected officials, rules, and regulations. We need some people in those seats with normalcy, with aligned views that share our concerns, not ones that just are after those trucks are dirty and they smoke. Let's let's end that. Let's, you know, I mean, the, the penalties they've started to incur that will happen January 1st on buildings over 25,000 square feet. I don't, you know, most people don't know this, but you're about to watch Denver become vacant in the high rise buildings down there. Because of the new greenhouse gas regulations they've put on facilities now. The the big businesses like Marriott and, and the hotel chains and all of those places, they're going to look at their buildings and be like, we're not making any money in Denver. And now they're going to fine us because the facility we're at doesn't meet their greenhouse gas criteria. We're out. We'll just close that chain. We'll just close that facility. We'll go to Texas. We'll go to wherever. We're not affected by that. Not a problem. And you're going to watch downtown Denver die. Mm. slowly but surely actually not even slowly next year we're going to see it hit it's going to be interesting so you, you think the hotels are going to take leave they, they oh they they can't they can't afford the fines jam yeah. and if their facilities oh. don't meet the investment and the thing is the cost of the investment to get them beyond mm. what the fine will be it's like a the, the one study they did on the one building jam the amount of money they had to invest they would have to keep they wouldn't get that investment back for 66 years Wow! who's going to make an investment that you don't get back for you don't even break even wow. for 66 years that's crazy yeah these things that are being required of us and it, it's it's just not talked about it's not publicized it is in the paper but you have to know what you're looking for right it's not going to be on kyle clark he's damn sure not going to go out there and go hey do you guys know about this this isn't good for denver it's so bad the city of denver fought it wow. i mean that's how bad it is wow. and so I don't, I don't know if i heard dave mention it i know i've been listening but i, I want to throw out there jam when you ask about it is that so basically a, a natural gas heated building can't pass 
Okay, it's just not doesn't have the insulation or doesn't have the correct heaters or however however you want to look at it. Natural gas. What Dave's talking about is when they put in the new regulations, eighty percent of the buildings are natural gas in Denver and won't pass and won't pass. So when he's talking about dying, eighty percent of the buildings won't pass, and you and you can't like you said you can't fix them. And what are they doing with the new buildings? What what kind of gas or how are they heating? Electric. Well, here, here's one for you, Jim. Electric. Yep. How how many loads do you think like we've solar electric? <laughs> <or> <laughs> solar. Yeah. Wind electric, yeah. Here, here's one for you. You guys have all went to Fry's and picked up a load, even you yourself, right, Jam, a couple weeks ago? A few times. Right? I'm sure everyone in our fleet has driven past that ginormous hospital campus right there at Highway 58 and I-70, right? Mm-hmm. Brand new, $800 million campus. Wow. Doesn't meet the new criteria. Wow. Do you know why? Uh, natural gas. Yes. And their choice was to use natural gas because it's so much more efficient to heat their boilers, mm. to create their heat, to generate all of their- Hot water, all, e- all the patients' everything, needs. Everything, right? And that hospital is, it hasn't even opened yet, and it's looking at a million-dollar fine year one. Wow. Year one. A brand-new facility that hasn't even opened can't meet. And you go to the, the builder of the hospital, and he goes, listen- we can't do solar. We can't do electric. It doesn't work. It's not efficient. We can't use it. It physically is impossible to use these things and run a hospital. It's impossible. So they're going to quit building it? What are they going to do? Open up and pay the fine. Wow. There's and a that's few- going to translate into everybody's costs. Absolutely. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. And all we need to do is vote. And these things stop happening. They stop happening. Tie the big picture together. I mean, there's a few ski slopes that are probably going to close, Jim, really? because of the fines they're going to be required to meet. Purgatory down in, uh, I forget where that's at. Do, was that Durango area? I think no. so, it is. Jim. Yeah. yeah, it is. They're looking at closing their facility because, number one, they can't get gas because guess Natural what? Gas. They're, on, they're on top of a mountain. There's no there's no gas development for homes being built up there. So no gas has ever been brought there. And I believe that ski slope started in the 30s or the 20s. I don't yeah, remember which. All, all One of the rain. oldest ski slopes in the state of Colorado, if not the oldest. And that's a destination. You just don't go there to ski. That's, a, that's heritage. That's a destination, everything else, right? Their electricity, guess what? It's inefficient because when they have storms, their electricity goes out all the time. So they've actually created an, an extensive propane network, and they haul the propane up there, which guess who hauls it? Us truckers do, right? <laughs> JFW doesn't specifically, but it's, it's great work for trucking companies. And they have backup generators and diesel engines, or I'm sorry, propane engines that run off of propane to keep their boilers going that they're using with propane and all of that. And because they're so far off the grid, their fine will be so high, they're like, we're done. We can we can close down and sell, and and let someone else worry about it. It's not our problem, mm-hmm. and go away. And it's it's sad. So I, I guess I'm I'm asking, I'm begging. If you didn't vote, please come see me. I, I'm going to be thrilled to help you register. I won't point any fingers. I won't ask why you haven't voted, but please come see me. Come text me, email me, call me, whatever you want to do. I will gladly help you. Get registered to vote because, man, your vote counts. And you need to ask your wife. You need to ask your brothers, your fathers, your cousins, your mothers, everyone. Your kids, they need to vote. They need to get involved. Most hardworking people know the right way to vote, and they won't vote these crazy people in that are just killing our our, our livelihoods. So anyway, I'm out. I'm off my soapbox. That's a final thought right there. That was a good one. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Did, did, we, did we talk about it, Dave, with... Rich, after we talked to, to him about the election, about how he said it changed his life, did we mention that? Did I mention that on it on the podcast? At did all? you last week? Changed his life? I don't know. Did we? Maybe. Did, I, I don't. Anyway, think we, we did. We had a conversation with Rich, you know, and and he wasn't a registered voter before all this started, and he even said that Joni would tell him, "Hey, you can't complain if you're not going to vote." And you know, obviously, he got involved and. And he voted and he ran and all the stuff we've talked about and told you about. And rock star. 
you know, rock star. On, and on the phone conversation with him, you know, he said, really, this cha- this situation or event or however changed his life. Yeah. And he said it all started with a conversation with Dave <laughs> and, you know, a conversation with, with other people, a conversation with my family. He said he even thought that his and Joni's relationship was stronger and better because because of the communication, because of the conversation. You know, we're having this podcast because of a conversation. You know, um, Dave, whether you would, you know, whether I call it a soapbox, you call it a soapbox, whatever. You know, Dave's high road, high road Holland. We're trying to have a conversation with everybody, and we're trying to reach you here with the podcast. So, if you have something. Reach out to us. Let's have a conversation. Absolutely, open door policy. You know, open door policy. Let's let's discuss it. You know, I, I use it several times. I've mentioned it over the podcast. You know, uh, Chris Beam. He, he he's been here long enough. At some point, it sounded like a broken record, but we were discussing something, and I got upset. And he goes, "You know, why why are you so passionate? You know, why why are you upset? Why do you take it personal? You know, take yeah. Why do you take it personal? And 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 it's because we 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 live it every day and. I, I think that's what you're asking people to do, Dave, is take some of these decisions that's going on personally because really personally they affect you. Oh my gosh. And, Look around you. And, and you and you may not you may maybe you don't realize that or you're just like I can't do anything about it. You can if you vote. Yes. You know, you can if you're involved in it. And maybe it's not voting, which I want you to vote, but maybe it's like Rich does if you're Maybe it's getting involved in your school board. Maybe it's getting involved in your in your uh, neighborhood activities. Maybe it's anything. Your HOA board, your water board, any of that. Yeah. It, but it is to vote. It, you have to vote it, to it, make change. It, it, it is, but you have to start someplace, yes. Dave. Yes, yes. You know, so so get involved with that and, and, and figure it out. And I, I, so I'm just, you know, I'm capitalizing. I have my book in front of me, but I'm, I'm capitalizing on, on what you said, Dave, because I really like Rich's point about the conversation it just takes a conversation yeah. you and know if, and not not an not an email or a text yeah so, yeah so. It, it, I, I guess i you know i said i was done clearly i'm not uh it's 9 30 <laughs> <laughs> that's funny so I, I guess you know if you don't think you're involved or affected by it look at what you're paying for bread Look at what you're paying for gas. Look at what your groceries have done. Look at the cost of a vehicle. Look at the cost of repairs. Look at the cost of tires. I mean, yeah. if you own anything, your costs in the last 24 months skyrocketed. Unimaginable, yeah. unimaginable cost increases. Look at what they're trying to do to your property taxes if you own a home. And guess what? If you don't own a home, you're still going to be affected because someone owns that home you're renting or the apartment. Or whatever the case may be, your water bill, your electric bill. You, if you work here, you're paying that shit one way or another. Whether it's yours or someone else's, you're paying for it. And the only way to lower those is to get involved and vote. And it's not difficult. I can register you in three minutes, and you can put a little ink circle by a name. And things will change next year. But you have to vote. You have to be engaged, and it's the easiest thing in the world. Hmm. So, speaking about, I'm sorry, I know we still got to get back to you, Jim, but no, uh, speaking about the money and the expenses, the other day, my family decided we're going to have Chinese food, right? My wife comes home with the food, and I just look and I make a mental note. And I'm like, huh, it's probably 100 bucks, right? Next day, I'm talking about we each had a plate, and they got me an extra plate to bring to work the next day, and we got some egg rolls on the side. Some dumplings on the side and some, uh, what do they call the, the crab? Uh, wontons. wontons. Yeah, the crab, right? The cheese. Crab oh, yeah. yeah cheese, the, cheese wontons or whatever. Rangoons or something. The crab like rangoons, that. right? Yeah. Next day, I look at my account, 105 bucks. I'm like, man, Chinese food used to be like 30 yeah. bucks to feed your whole family. And yeah. you got so much of it, Jam. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you ate for we, three days. Yeah. We, I've been bragging to you guys. You we still found do. this. You used to have dollar scoop. Now you have ten dollar scoop, <laughs> right? I mean, we've been bra- I've been bragging to you guys. Janet and I found this little place, little Mexican restaurant by us. We can, and I'm bragging, right? We go there. We split fajitas for one, not two, for one. We both get a drink. It comes with chips and salsa. 
And by the time we pay the tip, I've got it to 50 bucks even. Huh. I can tip. It's like 40, it's always $41, 42 bucks. Give them their 20% and it's, I can make it 50 bucks even. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I'm happy with that because that's <laughs> right. the cheapest we can go out. Right. We just took dad out Sunday night to another restaurant, another Mexican restaurant near his place. And everybody, Janet was like, oh, the food's so good, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, yeah, it's as good as the other place. I don't see any difference, you know? <laughs> Bill comes for the three of us, three people, three meals. What well, Janet and I split the fee. He did chicken for one, right. right? Not for two, for one. We both had a drink. Dad had a burrito, his drink. It was a hundred and thirty dollars wow. by the time I tipped him there twenty percent. And I, I'm I'm generous. I mean, yeah, I I believe in tipping. Yeah. I believe in that. I mean, for good service, absolutely. Yeah. I I jam. I I think it's karma, man. I even tip for shitty service. I, I tip do. for shitty service too, not twenty percent. But I'll tell them. <laughs> right. I'll tell them. There you Listen, go. I'm giving you this, but you need you to suck. do better on this. But mm-hmm. yeah, you suck. <laughs> Here's a tip: you should do better work. Yeah. <laughs> you know how you tip for shitty service? You put the tip in the water glass and turn the water glass upside down Dang. and slide a napkin out, and they got to spill that water to get the tip. Uh, he's wow. Mean. He's that's, mean. Di- that's, that's a restaurateur yeah, right that's there. That's a diabolical trick. Yeah. Right that's what yeah. I learned in being in the restaurant business for years. Do you know how wet I would get trying to set that up, man? I'd spill shit everywhere, Dave. Yep. Jim, you have any more thoughts? No, I, I'm good. I, I, I capitalized on Dave. Oh, I think, man. I think it's a... I politically him overran him. I politically overran him. No, I think, I think I'd like to leave it with just having the conversation. Okay. Somebody needs to start with a conversation. Soup? Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just repeat um, the point or the quote that I said at the end of my High Road Holland story. We should never assume the negative. We should believe in the positive. People are inherently good and don't mean harm to others. So don't react out of emotion. React using reason and make the right choice. I like that. You, you didn't get up that morning to suck, huh, Dave? Huh. That's right. <laughs> Most Never people. do. Nobody wakes up to suck. Yeah. My final thought is to uh, be honest with yourself. Ask yourself if you're putting your best foot forward here at JFW or wherever you work. You got to want success more for yourself than JFW wants it for you. We can't write your your paycheck for you. You got to do that on your own. So when you come here and you know you're not putting the work in, don't expect to make the same amount of money that somebody's actually doing the job. And I'll leave you with the quote myself. And it says, when you want different for yourself, you have to start moving different. Old keys don't unlock new doors. Oh, I like that. Yeah, that's yeah. a good one. That's some yeah. deep right. thought right there. Old keys. Yep. All right. We doing yep. the creed? Let's say the creed. And Ready. Get on out of here. Okay. Together, Together we face and overcome all that stands before us. Together we are accident free. Together we joyfully create honest value for those we serve. Together we celebrate our differences and respect those with whom we work. Together we are accountable for our words and our actions. Together, Together we are the JFW, JFW family. family. Hiya. See you, everybody. Ooh-ah. Have a great week. Woo! Booyah. Hi, Rhoda. Amen. Hi, Rhoda. <laughs> I see those big, bright, shiny red trucks just a trucking down the road. Those big, bright, shiny red trucks just a looking for another load. Well, it's a family tradition, any Rocky Mountain day, our fathers before us showed us the way. We work for asphalt cowboys and concrete kings, but that's never been a problem, because we got diesel in our veins. We've got diesel in our veins. See those big, bright, shiny red trucks just a trucking down the road. Those big, bright, shiny red trucks just looking for another load. I hear there's a couple million tons to move. I see them everywhere. So you best get out their way and watch that sand and gravel disappear. There's another run to make. We gotta get it there on time. We got what it takes to lay it all out on the line. We lay it all out on the line. I see those big 
big bright shiny red trucks are just a trucking down the road. Those big bright shiny red trucks just looking for another load. Those big bright shiny red trucks got the best drivers in town. They got all the tools they need to keep that hammer down. When they hit them scales, they won't need to dodge them, won't need to duck them. They just keep that hammer down and they keep that diesel trucking. Keep that hammer down and keep that diesel trucking. See those big bright shiny red trucks just a trucking down the road. Those big bright shiny red trucks just a looking for another load. They just keep them doors a closed, keep them butts in their seats. Cause those customers are calling and those red trucks can't be beat. They gotta put the hammer down and pick up another load. Get it off the ground, keep them eyes open and on the road. Keep them eyes open on the road. I see those big bright shiny red trucks just a trucking down the road. Those big bright shiny red trucks just looking for another load. Breaker, Breaker 2-3, anybody got a copy on that Channel 23 podcast? Welcome, and thanks for listening.